Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. As they disappeared from the room, their laughter echoing in the empty space, it was clear that even amidst their schemes and machinations, there was room for moments of joy and connection. Chapter 51 As the portal opened, Azrael stepped through, his presence commanding attention. Hikari, this is Azrael, Lucifer introduced. Hikari regarded Azrael with a mix of curiosity and caution. What brings you here? He asked, trying to gauge the reason for the unexpected visit. Azrael's expression was solemn. I've come to offer you guidance and training, he said, his voice resonating with authority. You possess great power, but it must be honed and controlled. Otherwise, it could lead to unintended consequences. Hikari listened intently, sensing the gravity of Azrael's words. What kind of training? He inquired, eager to learn more about the path that lay ahead. We will delve into the depths of your abilities, exploring their intricacies and unlocking their full potential, Azrael explained. But be warned, the journey will be arduous and demanding. Are you prepared to embark upon it? Hikari nodded resolutely. I am, he affirmed, steeling himself for the challenges that awaited. Lead the way. With that, Azrael and Hikari departed, leaving behind a sense of anticipation and determination in their wake. As Azrael led Hikari to a secluded training ground, they passed through shimmering portals, traversing realms beyond mortal comprehension. Hikari marveled at the kaleidoscope of sights and sounds, each step reinforcing the vastness of the cosmos and the depths of his own potential. Here, we shall begin, Azrael declared, gesturing towards a clearing surrounded by ancient trees. Your training will test your resolve, your discipline, and your mastery over reality itself. Hikari squared his shoulders, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. I'm ready, he affirmed, determination shining in his eyes. Their training commenced with Azrael guiding Hikari through intricate meditation techniques, honing his focus and attuning his senses to the subtle energies that permeated the universe. With each breath, Hikari delved deeper into the recesses of his mind, uncovering hidden reservoirs of power waiting to be unleashed. As the days passed, Hikari's control over his abilities grew stronger, his command over reality becoming more precise and nuanced. Under Azrael's watchful guidance, he learned to shape the fabric of existence itself, bending time and space to his will with effortless grace. But the path to mastery was not without its trials. Hikari faced formidable obstacles and grueling tests of strength, both physical and mental. Yet, with each challenge overcome, he emerged stronger and more determined than before, his spirit undaunted by the trials that lay ahead. In the quiet moments between training sessions, Hikari found himself reflecting on the journey that had brought him to this point. He thought of his friends, his family, and the world he had left behind, each memory a source of strength and inspiration driving him forward. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the training ground, Hikari stood tall, his gaze fixed on the stars above. He knew that his journey was far from over, but with Azrael by his side and the knowledge he had gained, he was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, forging his own destiny amidst the cosmic tapestry of existence. So let me get this correct of all this you could wish for from father you chose to be a god. Azrael said looking at Hikari. I might say that was pretty daring move, but also probably one he saw coming after why else would he put in this world, a world without a god. Hikari nodded, his expression serious. It wasn't an easy decision, but I couldn't ignore the opportunity to explore my full potential and make a difference in this world. Being a god comes with its challenges and responsibilities, but I believe it's the path I'm meant to walk. Azrael regarded him with a knowing look. Indeed, the choice you've made will shape the course of your destiny. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. As you continue to grow and evolve, never lose sight of who you are and the values that define you. Hikari nodded solemnly, absorbing Azrael's words. I won't forget, he vowed. I'll strive to use my abilities for the greater good and to protect those I care about. With a reassuring smile, Azrael clasped Hikari's shoulder. Then let us continue your training, young god. There is still much for you to learn and discover on the path that lies ahead. And with that, they resumed their practice, 
Hikari embracing the journey that awaited him with renewed determination and purpose. So, um, I have a question. Hikari said looking at Azriel. How the does Christianity exist in this world, I mean there is no God here so how, with that logic there should be no Jesus or Bible. Azrael chuckled softly at Hikari's question, understanding his confusion. The existence of Christianity in this world is a result of the complex interplay between belief, culture, and human history. While it's true that there is no singular God in this realm like the one you embody, belief systems often take on a life of their own, shaped by the collective consciousness of sentient beings. He paused, considering his words carefully. Religion, in its various forms, serves many purposes for mortals. It provides comfort, guidance, and a sense of purpose in a world that can often seem chaotic and uncertain. Even without a god in the traditional sense, the concepts of faith, spirituality, and morality can still hold great significance for those who inhabit this realm. Hikari nodded thoughtfully, absorbing Azrael's explanation. So, essentially, belief itself has power, he mused. It's not about whether a god exists or not, but rather the impact that belief has on the individuals and societies that uphold it. Exactly, Azrael affirmed with a smile. And as a god yourself, you'll come to understand the intricacies of belief and its influence on the world firsthand. It's a fascinating aspect of mortal existence, one that you'll no doubt encounter as you continue your journey. Also because of Gabriel. Lucifer said Remy bring his sister. She has always been the one spread father word in every universe, it is up to that universe, God to allows does words. Azrael nodded in agreement. Indeed, Gabriel has played a pivotal role in disseminating the teachings of our father across countless universes. She embodies the divine messenger, tasked with delivering the word of God to those who would receive it. However, as you rightly pointed out, it ultimately falls to the gods of each universe to allow or reject those teachings within their respective realms. He paused, a hint of sadness in his eyes as he thought of his sister's tireless efforts. Gabriel's devotion to our fathers will knows no bounds. She believes wholeheartedly in the importance of spreading his word and guiding mortals towards enlightenment. But even she understands the limitations of divine intervention and the importance of free will. Hikari listened intently, struck by the weight of Azrael's words. So, in a way, the existence of Christianity here is a reflection of the choices made by the gods of this world, as well as the beliefs and interpretations of its inhabitants. Exactly, Azrael confirmed. It's a delicate balance between the divine and mortal realms, where faith and free will intersect in ways that shape the very fabric of existence. Wait does that mean? Hikari though for a bit activation his time power. I already control time and I am god of this world which means I can go back in time and created my own religion. Azrael raised an eyebrow, intrigued by Hikari's line of thinking. Technically, yes, as a god with control over time, you possess the ability to manipulate the past and shape it according to your will. However, tampering with the fabric of history comes with its own set of consequences and ethical considerations. He paused, choosing his words carefully. Creating a religion is a significant undertaking, one that carries immense responsibility and implications for the mortals who would come to follow it. While you may have the power to shape their beliefs, it's essential to consider the impact such actions would have on their lives and the broader world. Azrael's expression softened, a hint of wisdom in his gaze. Remember, Hikari, with great power comes great responsibility. It's crucial to wield your abilities with care and compassion, always mindful of the consequences they may bring. Ahahahaha. <laughs> Lucifer lapped look at Hikari. He is actually going to do it, oh boy, so how far are you gonna go back? Hikari's expression turned contemplative as he weighed Lucifer's words. I haven't decided yet, he admitted, his mind racing with possibilities. But if I were to go back, it would be far enough to establish a foundation, one that could shape the course of history. He glanced at Azrael, seeking his opinion. What do you think, Azrael? How far back should I go to lay the groundwork for a new belief system? Azrael considered Hikari's question thoughtfully before responding. It depends on your intentions and the scope of your vision, he replied. Going back too far could alter the fabric of reality in unforeseen ways, while going back too recently might not allow for enough time to establish a significant impact. 
I would advise careful consideration and perhaps consultation with others before making such a decision. Hikari nodded, absorbing Azrael's advice. Thank you, he said sincerely. I'll take that into account as I contemplate my next steps. Lucifer leaned back, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Well, whatever you decide, it's bound to be interesting, he remarked, a smirk playing on his lips. Just be sure you're ready for the consequences. With that, the conversation continued, Hikari delving deeper into the possibilities of reshaping history with his newfound powers, while Azrael and Lucifer offered guidance and insights along the way. How about this? Lucifer said looking at him. When Gabriel first arrived in this world, 80,000 BC before the Greek and even the Romans started their empire. Hikari's eyes widened with realization. That could work, he said, nodding slowly. It's a significant point in history, and it provides ample time for the spread of a new religion before the rise of other major belief systems. Azrael chimed in, indeed, it could lay the groundwork for a profound shift in spiritual beliefs and practices. Lucifer grinned, pleased with the idea. Plus, it adds a bit of flair to the whole endeavor, he added. Just imagine the possibilities. Hikari nodded, feeling a surge of excitement at the prospect. All right then, he said decisively. 80,000 BC it is. Let's see what kind of world we can create. Wait before we do this can I do something? Hikari said looking at Azrael. Can I? Sure. Azrael said looking at him. It is your choice. As Hikari left after a while he came back with Natsuki, and his family. This place is not affected by time changes correct? Hikari said looking at them. If so they will stay here until we are done with doing what we are doing. Okay what the? Hikari Sisti Sus looking at him. What is going on explain bro? Hikari took a deep breath, gathering his thoughts before he began to explain. I'm going to use my powers to go back in time to a pivotal moment in history, he started. We're going to create a new religion, one that aligns with our beliefs and values. Natsuki stepped forward, her expression serious. We'll be shaping the course of history, she said. It's a big responsibility, but I trust Hikari to do what's right. His sister looked at him, a mix of concern and curiosity in her eyes. And what exactly do you hope to achieve with this? She asked. Hikari met her gaze, his own determination shining through. A better world, he said simply. One where people can find hope and meaning in their lives, where they can strive for goodness and compassion. His family exchanged glances, processing the gravity of his words. Finally, his sister nodded. All right, she said. We'll stay here and await your return. Just be careful, Hikari. With a nod of gratitude, Hikari turned to Azrael. Let's do this, he said, his voice filled with determination. It's time to change the world. But really? His youngest sister said looking at. Are you sure you should do you are like as you have said morally grey than good? Hikari paused, considering his sister's words carefully. I know I've made some questionable choices in the past, he admitted, but I believe this is the right thing to do. By shaping the beliefs of society, we have the power to influence people for the better, to guide them towards a path of compassion and understanding. His sister studied him for a moment before sighing softly. Just promise me you'll be careful, she said. I don't want to see you get hurt, Hikari. Hikari nodded, gratitude in his eyes. I promise, he said solemnly. I'll do everything in my power to make sure this goes smoothly. With a reassuring smile, he turned back to Azrael, ready to embark on their journey to reshape history. All right we are here. Lucifer said coming out of part. 8000 BC now 3. 2. 1. As then a bright light comes, out of was woman with yellow hair multiple angelic wings, a blindfold covering eyes, she was wearing a white dress, as she removed the blindfold as she looked at that group, this was Gabriel. Brother. Gabriel said looking at them. What are you doing here, wait you? As she looked at Hikari. I see you're from the future correct all three of you. Hikari nodded, acknowledging Gabriel's observation. Yes, we're from the future, he confirmed. We've come with a purposito reshape the course of history. 
Gabriel regarded them with a mixture of curiosity and concern. Reshape history? For what purpose? She inquired. Hikari took a deep breath, gathering his thoughts. We believe that by influencing the beliefs and values of society, we can create a better world, he explained. A world where compassion, understanding, and kindness prevail. Gabriel considered his words for a moment before nodding slowly. I understand, she said, her expression softening. But be warned, altering the fabric of time comes with consequences. Are you prepared to face them? Hikari exchanged a glance with Lucifer and Azrael before turning back to Gabriel with determination in his eyes. We're ready, he said firmly. Whatever challenges may arise, we'll face them together. With that, they began their journey through time, guided by their shared vision of a brighter future. And if you're going to create this new religion? Gabriel said looking at them as she understands what Hikari meant. I won't stand by, I will passing father believe for now goodbye. Hikari nodded solemnly, understanding Gabriel's stance. Thank you, Gabriel, he said with gratitude. Your wisdom and guidance are invaluable to us. As Gabriel vanished, Hikari turned to his companions, a sense of determination filling him. Let's make this count, he said, his voice filled with resolve. We have the power to shape the future, and we won't let it slip away. With renewed purpose, they stepped forward into the currents of time, ready to forge a path that would change the course of history forever. Chapter 52 Gabriel, the Archangel, looked at Hikari with a mixture of surprise and curiosity. Brother, what are you doing here? And who are these people with you? Hikari took a deep breath, realizing the weight of what he was about to do. Gabriel, we're from the future, and we're here with a purpose. We're going to create a new religion. Gabriel's expression shifted to one of intrigue. A new religion? What kind of religion, and why? Hikari glanced at Lucifer, who nodded in encouragement. We're creating a religion that empowers individuals to find their own paths to enlightenment and self-discovery. It will be a religion of acceptance, compassion, and personal growth. Gabriel pondered for a moment before nodding slowly. I see. It sounds like a noble endeavor. But be warned, starting a religion is no small task. It will require dedication, conviction, and a clear vision. We understand, Hikari replied, determination in his voice. And we're ready to take on the challenge. Gabriel smiled warmly. Very well. If you're committed to this path, I will offer my support and guidance where I can. So what now? Hikari said looking at Lucifer and Azrael. What is out first order? First thing we is most important. Lucifer said looking at. We created a name. Lucifer and Azrael exchanged a knowing glance before Azrael spoke up. We've been considering a few options. What do you think, Hikari? Hikari pondered for a moment before replying, how about, Elysium? It symbolizes a place of ultimate happiness and enlightenment, which is what we aim to offer with our new religion. Lucifer nodded in agreement. Elysium it is then. Now, on to the next step, spreading the word. We'll need to establish temples, gather followers, and organize rituals to solidify our presence. Azrael added, but we must proceed with caution. There will be resistance from established religious institutions, and we need to ensure that our message reaches those who are seeking an alternative path. Hikari nodded, understanding the challenges ahead. We'll need to strategize carefully and work together to overcome these obstacles. But I believe that with our combined strength and determination, we can make Elysium a beacon of hope and enlightenment for all. With a renewed sense of purpose, the trio set out to lay the foundation for their new religion, Elysium, and embark on a journey that would shape the course of history. First we need to gather a follower. Hikari said looking Azrael. And seek and I need clothes of this era. He said looking at Lucifer. And then go to a town maybe a small one and start from there, so yeah. Azrael nodded in agreement. Gathering followers will be crucial for establishing Elysium's presence. We'll need individuals who resonate with our beliefs and are willing to spread the word. Lucifer smirked. As for clothing, consider it done. I'll ensure you have the attire fitting for a figure of authority in this era. 
Hikari turned his attention to the logistics. Let's start in a small town. We can gauge the reception and adjust our approach accordingly. Once we have a foothold, we can expand our reach to larger communities. With their plan in place, the trio set out on their mission to gather followers and establish Elysium as a force for enlightenment and positivity in the world. As they ventured into the small town, Hikari, Lucifer, and Azrael observed the locals, searching for individuals who might be receptive to their message. They approached townsfolk with warmth and sincerity, sharing their vision for a community built on compassion, understanding, and spiritual growth. Some were skeptical, wary of unfamiliar ideas, while others were curious and open-minded. Hikari, with his innate charm and persuasive words, managed to win over a few individuals who were intrigued by the promise of a new spiritual path. Lucifer, ever the master of persuasion, used his charisma and wit to engage with the townsfolk, captivating them with tales of hope and transformation. Azrael, with her serene presence and wisdom, offered guidance and comfort to those who sought solace in their uncertain times. Together, they began to lay the foundation for Elysium, nurturing a community of like-minded individuals who shared their vision for a better world. Each follower brought their unique strengths and perspectives, contributing to the collective journey toward enlightenment and spiritual fulfillment. And so, under the guidance of Hikari, Lucifer, and Azrael, Elysium flourished, becoming a beacon of hope and enlightenment in a world hungry for meaning and purpose. Will this was easy it took two to three days. Hikari said looking at Lucifer. And it was fast. Will first, most religious start like this. Lucifer said looking at him. And seek and this is a small twin with about 130 people max so yeah. Indeed, the size of the town made it easier to establish our presence and gain followers quickly. Azrael said looking at them. However, the real challenge lies ahead as we strive to maintain and grow our community while staying true to our principles. His eyes moved as he went to the window and saw the town. It will require dedication, perseverance, and constant adaptation to the needs of our followers. But with our combined efforts and the support of our newfound allies, I believe we can build something truly remarkable. I have an idea. Lucifer said looking at Hikari. Most God do this during the start of their religion and that is creed a miracle. Lucifer said looking at Hikari. I mean didn't you ever question how this world has magic Hikari? Understood. Let's continue the story. As Hikari pondered Lucifer's suggestion, he realized the potential impact of performing a miracle. With the magic inherent in this world, it wouldn't be too difficult to orchestrate an event that would astound the people and solidify their belief in the new religion. After some discussion, they decided on a plan. Hikari would use his powers to create a wondrous display of light and sound, reminiscent of the celestial beings described in religious texts. This would occur during a gathering in the town square, where they would announce the arrival of the new religion. Hikari, it's time, Lucifer said, his eyes gleaming with anticipation. Let's show them what we're capable of. Hikari nodded, his resolve firm. Let's do it. As they made their way to the town square, Hikari could feel the energy building around them. The townsfolk had gathered, their murmurs of curiosity filling the air. This is it, Azrael said, her voice tinged with excitement. Show them the power of our faith. With a deep breath, Hikari stepped into the center of the square. Closing his eyes, he focused his energy, summoning forth the magic that flowed within him. Suddenly, beams of light shot into the sky, illuminating the darkness with their brilliance. The crowd gasped in wonder, their eyes wide with amazement. Behold the miracle! Lucifer proclaimed, his voice ringing out over the square. Witness the power of our new faith. As the spectacle unfolded, Hikari felt a sense of pride and satisfaction wash over him. This was just the beginning of their journey, but already he could see the seeds of belief taking root in the hearts of the people. And thus, the new religion was born, its followers inspired by the miraculous display and eager to embrace the teachings of their newfound faith. With the miracle performed and the people captivated, Hikari, Lucifer, and Azrael knew that their movement had taken a significant step forward. Now, they would work to nurture and grow their fledgling faith, laying the foundation for a religion that would shape the world to come. Now time for. Time to give this world magic. As Hikari went to the people and spoke. 
As your god, I will give you a gift. Energy covers his hand. A piece of powers. As he smalled his hand at the ground all 130 of the people goddess Hikari had used reality powers to change their will everything, he was getting good at this as Hikari goes to the group. To think I was the one to give this world magic. Talk about time loop. Lucifer grinned, his eyes sparkling with pride. Indeed, my friend. You've come a long way since we first met. Now, let's see what wonders this world will create with the gift of magic. Together, they watched as the townsfolk marveled at their newfound abilities, their faces filled with joy and wonder. It was a moment of triumph, a testament to the power of belief and the strength of their vision for the future. As they stood side by side, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction. This was just the beginning of their journey, but already he could see the potential for greatness in the world they had helped to shape. And so it begins, Lucifer said, his voice filled with anticipation. The dawn of a new era. With that, they turned and walked away, their hearts full of hope for the future that lay ahead. Meanwhile, far away in nearby kingdom, people were talking about rumors of the new religion Elysium, as they talked words reached through kind. How their day. The king said pulling out his sword. In this world there is only one god and it is me. The king's world went across the castle, as every heard him, he pulled out his sword, and was ready to attack. The tension in the air was palpable as the king's words echoed through the halls of the castle. His proclamation sent a shiver down the spines of those who heard it, for they knew the consequences of defying his rule. But amidst the fear and uncertainty, there were whispers of a new faith rising in the land. The people spoke of Elysium, the fledgling religion that promised hope and freedom from the tyranny of the king. As the king brandished his sword, his subjects awaited his command with bated breath. Little did they know that the winds of change were stirring, and the seeds of revolution had already been sown. Your Majesty, forgive my impudence, but perhaps there is another way, one of the king's advisers dared to speak up, his voice trembling slightly. The king's eyes narrowed as he turned to face the daring advisor. And what way would that be? He demanded, his voice laced with authority and disdain. We have heard whispers of a new religion spreading among the people, the advisor replied cautiously. Perhaps, instead of quashing it with force, we could seek to understand it. Perhaps there is something in this Elysium that resonates with our people. The king's grip tightened on his sword hilt, his expression darkening. You would have me entertain the fantasies of peasants. He sneered. I am the one true ruler of this kingdom, and I will not tolerate any challenge to my authority. But even as he spoke, doubt gnawed at the corners of his mind. Could there be truth in the words of his adviser? Could this new religion pose a threat to his reign, or perhaps, offer a glimmer of hope to his oppressed subjects. As he pulled out the sword as the man's head was on the floor the just looked at everyone, everyone in the room. Silence hung heavy in the air as the king's subjects stared in shock at the grisly scene before them. The king's cold gaze swept over them, daring anyone to challenge his authority. Let this be a lesson to all who would dare question my rule, the king's voice echoed through the chamber, filled with menace. There is no room for dissent in my kingdom. Those who oppose me will meet the same fate. Fear and submission gripped the hearts of those present, and none dared to speak out against the king's brutal display of power. With a final, chilling glance around the room, the king sheathed his sword and strode out, leaving behind a trail of terror in his wake. Tell where is this town? The kind demanded to servant. Get out army ready in one night it and its show called God will desipur. The servant quickly nodded and scurried off to carry out the king's command. The king's orders were clear, and the entire kingdom would soon mobilize to crush any hint of opposition to his rule. The town where the followers of the new religion had begun to gather would soon find itself at the center of a storm, facing the wrath of a ruler who brooked no challenge to his authority. Meanwhile, in the small town where Hikari had started the new religion, the atmosphere was charged with excitement and anticipation. The townsfolk had witnessed the miraculous manifestation of magic, and rumors of the new god and his followers were spreading like wildfire. Hikari and his companions were busy organizing the growing community of believers. They set up a simple temple where people could gather to worship and learn about the teachings of Elysium. The town's economy began to thrive as pilgrims from neighboring regions flocked to witness the wonders attributed to the new religion. 
As Hikari walked through the bustling streets, he couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. He had taken a bold step in shaping the destiny of this world, and he was determined to guide his followers towards a better future. But little did he know, dark clouds were gathering on the horizon, threatening to unleash chaos and conflict. Hikari heard people running getting out of his house he saw a whole army, as he just saw. Okay what? Hikari saw an army coming to his city. Um what is going on? It is the tyrant king. One of the cities of the small town sighed running. Everyone run. As panic spread through the town, Hikari's heart raced with adrenaline. He knew he had to act fast to protect his followers and the newfound faith they held dear. Get everyone to safety, Hikari commanded, his voice firm with determination. We must defend our home and our beliefs. With a wave of his hand, Hikari summoned a barrier of energy to surround the town, shielding it from the impending attack. He then turned to his companions, eyes blazing with resolve. We stand together against tyranny and oppression, he declared. Let our faith be our strength, and may justice prevail. With that, Hikari led his allies to the town's defenses, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Everyone was at safety, and he was not at time to deal with this, as the army arrived with one powerful magic attack more than half of the Amri destroyed, as Hikari came in front of Servius and King Pist. We'll were fucked. One of the generals said. We are tucked. As Hikari descended from the sky, a wave of awe and fear washed over the survivors and the king alike. With his presence alone, he commanded attention and respect, a testament to his newfound status as a deity. You dare to threaten the peace of this town? Hikari's voice boomed with authority, echoing across the battlefield. Your tyranny ends here. The survivors watched in amazement as Hikari unleashed a barrage of energy, decimating the enemy forces with ease. The king, realizing the futility of his actions, fell to his knees in defeat. I beg for mercy, the king pleaded, his voice trembling with fear. I was blinded by my own greed and power. Spare us, mighty one. Hikari's expression softened slightly as he surveyed the wreckage around him. With a sigh, he lowered his hand, dispelling the barrier and allowing the survivors to approach. Your lives are spared, Hikari declared, his tone firm but compassionate. But know that I will not tolerate any further attempts to threaten the peace of this town or its people. Let this be a lesson to you all. As the survivors and the king retreated, Hikari turned to his companions, a sense of relief washing over him. We have prevailed, he said, a faint smile touching his lips. Now, let us rebuild and continue to spread the light of our faith. Chapter 53 You You The king said pulling out his sword. You're a fake. As then Hikari just cut his head off, as he put his body down. Even after spare you you still attacked me. Hikari said looking at the dead king. And after two goddamn he learned notings. As then Hikari looked at the army as he just sighed, as he just said to them take me to your kingdom. As Hikari was escorted to the kingdom, he couldn't help but feel a mix of apprehension and curiosity about what awaited him there. He knew that stepping into the heart of the kingdom would bring new challenges and responsibilities. Upon his arrival, Hikari was met with a mixture of awe and fear from the citizens. They had heard of his power and his role as the deity of the newly formed religion, Elysium. Some saw him as a savior, while others viewed him with suspicion and resentment. Despite the tension in the air, Hikari remained composed as he addressed the people. He spoke of peace, unity, and the promise of a better future under his guidance. He urged them to embrace the changes that were to come and to work together to build a prosperous kingdom. However, not everyone was willing to accept Hikari's authority. There were dissenters who saw him as a threat to their way of life and were determined to resist his rule. Hikari knew that winning over these skeptics would be a challenge, but he was determined to prove himself worthy of their trust. As he settled into his new role as the ruler of the kingdom, Hikari faced numerous obstacles and adversaries. Yet, with his newfound powers and the support of his allies, he was ready to confront whatever challenges lay ahead and pave the way for a brighter future for his people. As then Crow came and took human form as it was Lucifer as he looked at him. The people from TRH small town are coming here. What do you do about the skeptors what is your plan? Hikari regarded Lucifer with a thoughtful expression, 
contemplating the best course of action. He knew that winning over the skeptics would require patience, diplomacy, and perhaps a display of his power to instill confidence. We need to show them that we are here to bring positive change, Hikari replied, his voice firm with conviction. We'll start by addressing their concerns openly and honestly, and then we'll demonstrate the benefits of embracing the new order. If necessary, I'll use my powers to protect and defend our vision for the kingdom. He paused, considering the potential challenges that lay ahead. But above all, we must remain steadfast and united. Together, we can overcome any opposition and build a kingdom that thrives under the guidance of Elysium. So have a royal meeting. Lucifer said with grin. So let's call in all the high-ranking members. Hikari nodded in agreement. Yes, we need to gather all the key figures and discuss our strategy moving forward. It's important that everyone is aligned and understands their role in this new kingdom. With a wave of his hand, Hikari summoned his advisors and other influential individuals to the royal meeting. As they assembled, he addressed them with a sense of purpose and determination. We have a great task before us, Hikari began, his voice commanding attention. But with unity and vision, we can overcome any challenge. Let us work together to usher in a new era for our kingdom, guided by the principles of Elysium. With that, the meeting commenced, as they deliberated on how best to navigate the turbulent times ahead and establish their reign. Who is this? Hikari said looking at five-year-old boy. I summoned everyone important here. He is the king's son. One of the advisors said looking. A child born from the king many one night affair, I found and hide him from the king. Hikari listened intently, processing the revelation. Interesting, he remarked, eyeing the young boy with a mix of curiosity and concern. We must ensure his safety and well-being. Despite his origins, he deserves a chance to thrive in this new kingdom. Turning to the advisors, he continued, let us include provisions for his care and education in our plans. He may prove to be an important figure in the future of our kingdom. With that decision made, the meeting continued, with Hikari and his advisors discussing the various aspects of governance and leadership in their burgeoning kingdom. As the meeting progressed, Hikari and his advisors delved into discussions about the administration of the kingdom, including matters of governance, infrastructure, and defense. They outlined plans for establishing institutions such as schools, hospitals, and courts to ensure the well-being and prosperity of their citizens. Meanwhile, Lucifer discreetly circulated among the attendees, using his charm and persuasive abilities to garner support for Hikari's leadership and vision for the kingdom. He also kept a watchful eye on the young prince, ensuring his safety and subtly guiding his interactions with others. As the meeting drew to a close, Hikari addressed the assembled group with confidence and determination. Together, we will build a kingdom that thrives on the principles of justice, equality, and prosperity for all, he declared, inspiring nods of agreement from those present. With plans in motion and alliances forged, Hikari and his advisors departed the meeting room, ready to embark on the journey of building their new kingdom and shaping its destiny. As then one day Hikari did it again a miracle, everyone in this kingdom now has magic, he needs this for the big plan a hospital he thought many man and woman healing magic to help and many other types is magic. Oh boy! Hikari said seating and throne room. Lucifer how long have we been here? One year and four moth. Lucifer said looking at Hikari. We still have long way to go don't worry once you go back to your time, I will turn you back to your age. As Hikari contemplated the progress they had made over the past year, he couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction at the transformation of the kingdom under his guidance. The hospital stood as a symbol of hope and healing, serving as a testament to the power of magic and the unity of the people. Lucifer's reassurance brought a sense of relief to Hikari, knowing that despite the challenges they faced, they were making a difference in the lives of countless individuals. With determination in his heart, Hikari looked towards the future, ready to continue his journey towards realizing his vision for the kingdom and its people. So what is next? Hikari said as he looked at the kingdom. What is next make this kingdom bigger? Lucifer nodded, contemplating Hikari's question. Expanding the kingdom is a logical next step, he began. But we must be strategic about it. We need to ensure that as we grow, we maintain stability and prosperity for our people. Hikari listened intently, 
absorbing Lucifer's wisdom. Agreed, he replied thoughtfully. We'll need to establish trade routes, forge alliances with neighboring kingdoms, and strengthen our defenses. Lucifer nodded in agreement. And we mustn't forget about the well-being of our citizens, he added. As we expand, we must continue to invest in infrastructure, education, and healthcare to ensure that everyone can thrive. Hikari nodded, a sense of determination filling him. Let's get started then, he said, rising from his seat. There's much work to be done, but together, we can build a kingdom that stands as a beacon of hope and progress. With renewed purpose, Hikari and Lucifer began to chart the course for the kingdom's expansion, knowing that the path ahead would be challenging but filled with endless possibilities for growth and prosperity. As Hikari and Lucifer delved into planning the kingdom's expansion, they realized the importance of diplomacy and negotiation with neighboring realms. They dispatched emissaries to establish trade agreements, alliances, and diplomatic ties, laying the groundwork for future collaboration and mutual prosperity. Meanwhile, Azrael focused her efforts on strengthening the kingdom's internal structures, ensuring that the needs of the people were met and that justice prevailed throughout the land. She worked tirelessly to establish fair laws and impartial courts, earning the trust and respect of the citizens. With their combined efforts, the kingdom flourished, attracting settlers and traders from far and wide. The bustling markets and vibrant streets bore witness to the kingdom's newfound prosperity, as artisans, merchants, and adventurers flocked to its gates in search of opportunity and adventure. But amidst the celebrations and successes, challenges loomed on the horizon. Rumors of unrest and dissent began to surface, fueled by those who opposed Hikari's rule and the teachings of Elysium. Hikari knew that maintaining peace and stability would require vigilance and resolve, as he and his allies prepared to confront the threats that lay ahead. One day, a delegation from a neighboring kingdom arrived at the royal palace, bearing news of a potential alliance. Hikari greeted them warmly, eager to explore the possibilities of cooperation and friendship between their realms. But as the negotiations progressed, it became clear that not all was as it seemed. The emissaries revealed that their kingdom was plagued by internal strife and political turmoil, and they sought Hikari's aid in quelling the unrest. Sensing an opportunity to extend his influence and bring about positive change, Hikari agreed to lend his support, pledging to help restore peace and order to their troubled land. With his allies by his side, Hikari embarked on a journey to the neighboring kingdom, where they would face new challenges and adversaries unlike any they had encountered before. But with courage, wisdom, and the power of Elysium guiding their way, they were prepared to confront whatever trials awaited them and continue their quest to build a better world for all. There is small village to the east. Lucifer said potion at the map. They are facing a lack of water so what will you do Hikari, I won't help you in everything. Hikari considered the situation carefully, his brow furrowed in thought. Access to clean water is essential for the well-being of any community, he replied, his voice tinged with concern. We cannot ignore their plight. Turning to Lucifer, Hikari continued, we'll need to mobilize resources and expertise to address this issue. First, we'll send a team of engineers and water specialists to assess the situation and identify potential solutions. Next, he said, his expression determined, we'll work with the villagers to implement sustainable water management practices, such as rainwater harvesting, well digging, and irrigation systems. Education and community involvement will be key to ensuring the long-term success of these initiatives. Lucifer nodded in agreement, impressed by Hikari's decisive approach. I'll oversee the logistics and coordinate with our allies to provide the necessary support, he offered, his eyes gleaming with determination. With a plan in place, Hikari and Lucifer set out to address the water crisis in the eastern village. Knowing that their actions would not only alleviate suffering but also strengthen the bonds of trust and cooperation between their kingdom and its neighbors. You do relish this is still through 8000 BC right? How will you do everything you said? Hikari nodded, acknowledging the challenge of implementing modern solutions in a time period without advanced technology. You're right, Lucifer. We'll need to adapt our approach to fit the capabilities of this era. Instead of relying on sophisticated engineering techniques, we can draw upon the knowledge of local craftsmen and natural resources, he explained. For example, we can construct simple irrigation channels using clay or stone, redirecting water from nearby sources to the village. 
We'll also teach the villagers methods for collecting and storing rainwater using basic materials like clay pots and woven baskets, Hikari continued. And we can explore the possibility of digging wells using rudimentary tools and manual labor. Lucifer nodded in understanding. It will require patience and creativity, but I have no doubt that we can find solutions that work within the constraints of this time period, he remarked, his confidence unwavering. With their plan adjusted to fit the resources and technology available in 800 BC, Hikari and Lucifer set out to address the water crisis in the eastern village, determined to make a difference in the lives of its inhabitants. Why don't we just use magic? Asriel said looking at them. Even the modern time, magic is still the most powerful thing. Hikari considered Azrael's suggestion, realizing the potential of using magic to solve the water crisis in the village. You're right, Azrael. Magic can indeed be a powerful tool, especially in situations like this where conventional methods may be limited. With our combined abilities, we can use magic to create sustainable solutions for the village, he continued. We can manipulate the elements to summon rain, create underground reservoirs, or even purify existing water sources. Lucifer nodded in agreement. Magic offers endless possibilities for addressing the villagers' needs quickly and effectively, he remarked. Let's harness our powers to bring relief to the eastern village and demonstrate the benefits of our new faith in action. With their decision made, Hikari, Lucifer, and Azrael set out to use their magic to provide the eastern village with a sustainable water source, ensuring the well-being and prosperity of its inhabitants. As days passed and Lucifer marked another village on his map with a smile. With this village out kingdom is growing. So what is our next move? Hikari observed the expanding territory on the map with satisfaction, knowing that each village brought them one step closer to realizing their vision for the kingdom. Our next move should focus on strengthening our infrastructure and fostering connections between the villages, he replied, considering their options. We can establish trade routes to promote economic growth, build roads to improve accessibility, and set up communication networks to facilitate collaboration and exchange of ideas, Hikari suggested. Additionally, we should continue to invest in education and healthcare to empower our citizens and ensure their well-being. By laying the groundwork for a cohesive and prosperous kingdom, we can create a thriving community where everyone has the opportunity to flourish, he added. Let's continue to work together to build a brighter future for our people. With a shared sense of purpose, Hikari and Lucifer began to outline their plans for further development and expansion, eager to see their kingdom flourish under their guidance. Chapter 54 As the kingdom expanded, tensions began to rise with neighboring realms. The newfound prosperity and magical advancements of Hikari's kingdom attracted both admiration and envy from nearby rulers. Rumors of their miraculous feats and the rapid growth of their territory spread far and wide, sparking intrigue and concern among other rulers. One fateful day, emissaries from a neighboring kingdom arrived at the royal court, bearing a message from their ruler. They spoke of grievances and territorial disputes, demanding concessions and tribute from Hikari's kingdom in exchange for peace. Hikari listened to their demands with a calm demeanor, but his resolve remained unshaken. He knew that appeasing their aggressors would only invite further aggression and undermine the sovereignty of his kingdom. We will not yield to threats or intimidation, Hikari declared, his voice resonating with authority. We seek peace, but we will defend our kingdom and our people with all our strength. With tensions escalating, Hikari and his advisors prepared for the inevitable conflicts that lay ahead. They fortified their borders, bolstered their defenses, and rallied their allies to stand united against the looming threats. As the drums of war echoed across the land, Hikari knew that the path ahead would be fraught with peril and uncertainty. But with courage, determination, and the power of Elysium at their side, they would face whatever challenges came their way and emerge victorious. Little did they know, this would be only the beginning of a series of wars that would test their mettle and reshape the destiny of their kingdom for generations to come. As in battleground Hikari saw multiple solder from a large kingdom, as they were ready to attack. Yeah no. As then multiple golden portal came from Ritsuka back, many many weapons. Die. As in second the whole army was destroyed. Behold my power, the god and king of my kingdom Gilgames. Hikari said as he chose this name when he arrived to this after all what bit name himself after one of his favorite characters. 
The battlefield fell silent as Hikari, now known as Gilgamesh, stood amidst the remnants of the defeated army. His display of power had left no doubt about his authority and prowess as the ruler of his kingdom. As the dust settled, Gilgamesh surveyed the scene with a sense of satisfaction. The threat had been neutralized, and his kingdom remained unscathed thanks to his decisive action. Turning to his companions, he nodded in acknowledgement. Let this be a lesson to all who dare challenge us, he declared, his voice echoing across the battlefield. We will not hesitate to defend our kingdom and our people from any who seek to do us harm. With that, Gilgamesh led his forces back to their stronghold, their spirits buoyed by their victory. But even as they celebrated, they knew that more challenges lay ahead, and they would need to remain vigilant to protect their kingdom from future threats. As they returned to their kingdom, Gilgamesh and his allies began to strategize for the battles yet to come. They knew that the road ahead would be fraught with danger, but they were prepared to face whatever challenges awaited them, united in their determination to defend their kingdom and uphold the principles of Elysium. Really Gilgamesh? Lucifer said looking at Hikari. You couldn't just pick your own name to use. I mean you're not wrong. But I chose this for a reason, after all Lucifer. Lucifer raised an eyebrow at Hikari's response, his expression a mixture of amusement and curiosity. Ah, I see your point, he remarked, nodding thoughtfully. Choosing a name with significance can be a powerful statement. Hikari nodded, a small smile playing on his lips. Exactly, he replied. Gilgamesh embodies strength, leadership, and a quest for greatness. It felt fitting for this new chapter in our journey. Lucifer chuckled softly. Well, if it suits you, then who am I to argue? He conceded, offering a supportive nod. Just remember, with great power comes great responsibility, Gilgamesh. Hikari's smile widened as he absorbed Lucifer's words. Indeed, he agreed. I'll strive to live up to the name and honor its legacy. With their conversation concluded, Hikari, now Gilgamesh, turned his attention back to the task at hand, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead with newfound determination and resolve. As Hikari left Azrael came as he looked at Lucier. So we are we go to tell we fucked up the time portal. Azrael said looking at Lucifer. This is not even 8000 BC if I am correct this knee the epic if Gilagmesh started, and will there is not Gilagmesh. As he put two and two together. I see what you're doing by not telling him Lucifer. Lucifer sighed softly, his expression grave as he regarded Azrael. You're right, he admitted, his voice tinged with regret. I should have been more forthcoming with Hikari about the situation with the time portal. Azrael nodded, her eyes reflecting understanding. We can't continue to deceive him, she insisted. He deserves to know the truth, especially if our actions have consequences beyond what we anticipated. I know, Lucifer replied, his tone heavy with guilt. But I was afraid of how he would react. He's already taken on so much responsibility, and I didn't want to burden him further. Azrael placed a comforting hand on Lucifer's shoulder. We'll tell him together, she suggested gently. And we'll face whatever consequences come our way as a team. With a nod of agreement, Lucifer and Azrael resolved to speak with Hikari and reveal the truth about the time portal. They knew it wouldn't be easy, but they also knew that honesty and transparency were essential for their continued success and unity as a team. So when do we tell him? Azrael said looking at him. When do we? Not know. Lucifer said with a smile. After all he still needs to go through his adventures, he still needs to meet Enkidu, fight Thr damn bull and go through finding that damn flower. Ha ha ha. Azrael laughed hearing what Lucifer said. I guess it will happen, he is Gilgamesh even do he hasn't relishes yet. Lucifer chuckled along with Azrael, though a hint of concern lingered in his expression. Indeed, he agreed. But we must be prepared for when the time comes. We can't keep this secret from him forever. Azrael nodded solemnly. Agreed, she said. We'll wait for the right moment, but we must ensure that Hikari is aware of the truth before it's too late. With a shared sense of resolve, Lucifer and Azrael continued to support Hikari on his journey, knowing that their bond and honesty would see them through whatever challenges lay ahead. As they continued to ponder their dilemma, Hikari approached them with a curious expression. 
what's on your minds? He asked, sensing their somber mood. Lucifer exchanged a glance with Azrael before speaking. We were just discussing the next steps for our kingdom, he replied, choosing his words carefully. Azrael nodded in agreement. Yes, there are many challenges ahead, but we're confident that together we can overcome them, she added, her voice steadied despite the underlying tension. Hikari studied their faces, sensing that something was amiss. Is there something you're not telling me? He asked, his intuition kicking in. Lucifer hesitated for a moment before speaking, weighing his words carefully. There's something you need to know, Hikari, he began, his voice serious. But it's a complicated matter, and we wanted to find the right time to tell you. Hikari's brow furrowed with concern. What is it? He pressed, his gaze shifting between Lucifer and Azrael. Azrael took a deep breath, steeling herself for what was to come. The truth is, Hikari, the time portal we use to travel here. It's malfunctioning, she explained, her voice tinged with regret. We're not in the year 800 BC as we thought. We're in a different time altogether. Hikari's eyes widened in surprise, his mind racing with questions. How is that possible? He asked, trying to make sense of the revelation. Lucifer stepped forward, placing a reassuring hand on Hikari's shoulder. We're still trying to understand it ourselves, he admitted. But for now, we need to focus on the task at hand and continue to build our kingdom. Despite the shock of the news, Hikari nodded, determination shining in his eyes. We'll deal with the time portal issue when the time comes, he said firmly. But for now, let's focus on our mission and the people who depend on us. With a renewed sense of purpose, the trio set aside their worries for the time being and turned their attention back to the kingdom they were building together. They knew that challenges lay ahead, but with their bond and determination, they were ready to face whatever the future held. Still when this is over we will return back at right as we left. Hikari said looking at them. We better be, also I miss Natsuki. Lucifer and Azrael exchanged a knowing glance, silently acknowledging Hikari's concerns. We'll find a way back, Lucifer assured him, his voice filled with conviction. And when we do, we'll make sure everything is as it should be. In the meantime, we'll do everything in our power to ensure the safety and prosperity of our kingdom, he added, her tone resolute. Hikari took a deep breath, finding comfort in their words. Thank you, both of you, he said sincerely. And when we return, I'll make sure to reunite with Natsuki as soon as possible. With their resolve reaffirmed, the trio continued their journey, facing whatever challenges came their way with courage and determination. And though the path ahead was uncertain, they knew that as long as they stood together, they would find their way back home. Chapter 55 As Hikari was in a different places, he has been doing this for a while running a religion and kingdom is heard, something as he saw a beast, something of godly as it was basically an animal. What are you? Hikari said getting up as the beast went back. Wow not here to hurst you buddy. As the beast retreated, Hikari felt a sense of curiosity and wonder wash over him. He had encountered many extraordinary beings in his time, but this creature seemed different almost otherworldly in its presence. Approaching cautiously, Hikari extended a hand in a gesture of peace. I mean you no harm, he said softly, his voice carrying a soothing tone. What brings you to this place? The beast regarded him with intelligent eyes, its demeanor shifting from wariness to curiosity. Sensing no immediate threat, it tentatively approached Hikari, its movements graceful yet powerful. As they stood face to face, Hikari couldn't help but marvel at the creature's majesty. There was something primal and ancient about it, as if it held secrets of the universe within its form. Are you a guardian of this land? Hikari ventured, his gaze never leaving the creatures. Or perhaps a messenger from the gods. The beast made no reply, but its presence alone spoke volumes. In that moment, Hikari felt a profound connection to the natural world and all its inhabitants, realizing that there were forces at work far beyond his understanding. With a silent nod of acknowledgement, Hikari watched as the beast disappeared into the wilderness, leaving him to ponder the mysteries of the universe and his place within it. Do you have a name? Hikari said looking at the beast. Do you? As the beast head moves left and right, as Hikari just looks at as he thought of a name as he said the name. 
Do you like this name? Hikari said writing it down. Enkidu. The beast seemed to consider the name for a moment before emitting a low, rumbling sound that could be interpreted as approval. Hikari smiled, feeling a sense of connection with the creature. Enkidu it is then, he said, addressing the beast with reverence. Welcome, Enkidu, guardian of this land. May our paths cross again in harmony and friendship. With that, Hikari watched as Enkidu disappeared into the wilderness once more, his heart filled with gratitude for the encounter and the bond they had forged. As Hikari continued his journey through the wilderness, his encounter with Enkidu lingered in his thoughts. He couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the creature than met the eye, and he was determined to uncover its mysteries. Days turned into weeks as Hikari ventured deeper into the untamed wilderness, guided by an instinctual sense of purpose. Along the way, he encountered various challenges and obstacles, from treacherous terrain to hostile creatures, but each trial only served to strengthen his resolve. One day, as he rested by a tranquil stream, Hikari sensed a presence approaching. He looked up to see Enkidu emerging from the dense foliage, his massive form towering over Hikari. Enkidu, Hikari greeted the creature with a smile. What brings you here? Enkidu grunted in response, his gaze fixed on Hikari with a mix of curiosity and determination. It was as if the beast had a message to convey, one that transcended words. Sensing the urgency in Enkidu's demeanor, Hikari rose to his feet, ready to follow wherever the creature led. Together, they journeyed deeper into the heart of the wilderness, their bond growing stronger with each passing moment. Along the way, Hikari encountered other creatures of the forest, from majestic deer to elusive foxes, each imparting their own wisdom and guidance. He learned to navigate the natural world with grace and humility, respecting the delicate balance of life that existed all around him. As they ventured deeper into the wilderness, Hikari began to sense a shift in the energy of the land. Strange phenomena occurred with increasing frequency, from inexplicable lights in the sky to mysterious whispers on the wind. With Enkidu by his side, Hikari delved into the heart of the mystery, determined to uncover the truth behind the strange occurrences. Little did he know, their journey would lead them to the brink of a revelation that would change the course of history forever. Few days later. Do you want to learn my language? Hikari said looking at Enkidu. Do you? Enkidu said nodding his head as he sat down, as Hikari started to teach him, not Japanese but the longs of this time. As Hikari patiently taught Enkidu the language of the land, their bond deepened, transcending the barriers of speech. With each lesson, Enkidu showed remarkable progress, quickly grasping the nuances of communication. Their language lessons became a daily ritual, a testament to the power of understanding and connection. Through words and gestures, Hikari and Enkidu forged a bond that went beyond mere companionship, becoming true friends and allies in their quest for knowledge and enlightenment. As Enkidu mastered the language of the land, he began to express himself more freely, sharing his thoughts and feelings with Hikari. Together, they explored the wonders of the wilderness, marveling at the beauty of nature and the mysteries of the world around them. In the quiet moments between lessons, Hikari and Enkidu would sit by the fire, exchanging stories and dreams. They spoke of their hopes for the future and the adventures that lay ahead, united in their quest for truth and discovery. With each passing day, Hikari felt a sense of gratitude for the companionship of Enkidu, knowing that together they could overcome any obstacle and face any challenge that crossed their path. As they continued their journey through the wilderness, they knew that their bond would only grow stronger with time, a beacon of light in the darkness of the unknown. As they sat by the crackling fire, Enkidu gazed into the flames, his expression thoughtful. Hikari, tell me more about your world, he said, his voice tinged with curiosity. Hikari smiled, a hint of nostalgia in his eyes. In my world, there are towering cities made of glass and steel, where people move at a frenetic pace, chasing dreams of success and prosperity, he began. But amidst the hustle and bustle, there is also beauty and wonder to be found. Enkidu listened intently, captivated by Hikari's descriptions. It sounds like a fascinating place, he remarked, his gaze returning to the dancing flames. But I must admit, I find solace in the simplicity of the wilderness, where the only sounds are those of nature itself. Hikari nodded in understanding. There is wisdom in the ways of the wild, he agreed. 
In my world, we often forget to listen to the whispers of the earth, but here, surrounded by nature's majesty, I feel more alive than ever. As the fire crackled and popped, casting flickering shadows across their faces, Hikari and Enkidu sat in companionable silence, their hearts filled with gratitude for the bond they shared and the adventures that awaited them. I have something to ask. Enkidu said looking at Hikari. Why does your people call you Gilagmesh, is it because you don't want to give the god name, which is Hikari correct? Hikari met Enkidu's gaze, a hint of sadness flickering in his eyes. Yes, you're right, he admitted, his voice tinged with regret. I chose the name Gilgamesh to fit in with the people of this time, but it's not my true name. My true name is Hikari. Enkidu nodded, understanding dawning in his eyes. And the reason you hide your true identity? He asked softly. Hikari sighed, the weight of his secret heavy upon him. There are forces at play beyond your understanding, Enkidu, he replied cryptically. For now, it is safer for me to conceal my true nature. But perhaps one day, when the time is right, I will reveal all. Enkidu placed a comforting hand on Hikari's shoulder. I trust your judgment, my friend, he said sincerely. But remember, you don't have to face these challenges alone. I am here for you, now and always. A sense of gratitude washed over Hikari, warming his heart. Thank you, Enkidu, he said, a faint smile gracing his lips. Your friendship means more to me than you know. Tell me who is this Natsuki? Enkidu said looking at him. Is she your lover? Hikari's expression softened at the mention of Natsuki. Natsuki is. Someone very dear to me, he replied, a wistful smile playing on his lips. She's not just my lover, she's my partner, my confidant, my everything. Enkidu's curiosity was piqued. What is she like? He inquired, his interest evident in his voice. Hikari's eyes lit up with affection as he spoke of Natsuki. She's kind, compassionate, and incredibly strong, he began, his voice filled with admiration. She has a fiery spirit and a fierce determination to do what's right, no matter the cost. Enkidu listened intently, captivated by Hikari's description of Natsuki. She sounds remarkable, he remarked, a smile tugging at his lips. Hikari nodded, a fondness evident in his gaze. She is, he agreed wholeheartedly. And I can't wait to see her again. Still. Enkidu said looking at his beast arms. I wish I can become human just like you. Hikari regarded Enkidu with empathy, understanding the longing in his words. I understand how you feel, he said gently, reaching out a hand to Enkidu's shoulder. But remember, what makes you special isn't your form, it's your heart. You may not be human in appearance, but you possess qualities that are truly admirable. Enkidu looked at Hikari, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Do you really think so? He asked, his voice tinged with uncertainty. Absolutely, Hikari affirmed with a reassuring smile. Your loyalty, your courage and your compassion are what define you. And with those qualities, you have the power to make a difference in this world, regardless of your outward appearance. Enkidu nodded, a sense of determination replacing his earlier doubt. Thank you, Hikari, he said gratefully. I will strive to live up to your words and make the most of the gifts I've been given. With newfound resolve, Enkidu set out to embrace his true potential, guided by Hikari's wisdom and encouragement. And together, they embarked on a journey of self-discovery and growth, bound by their unbreakable bond of friendship and camaraderie. As then one day Hikari was attacked by someone, they had beast horns, white skin on their arms and green flowing hair, for four night and days they fought and the end of Hikari was on the ground. Hikari gazed up at Enkidu, his breath labored as he struggled to rise from the ground. Enkidu. He gasped, his voice barely above a whisper. It was you. All this time. Enkidu nodded solemnly, his expression a mix of determination and remorse. Yes, Hikari, he admitted, his voice heavy with emotion. I needed to show you. To show myself. What I've become. Hikari's eyes widened in understanding as he took in Enkidu's transformed appearance. You've changed, he observed, a hint of awe in his voice. But why? Why put us through this ordeal? Enkidu knelt beside Hikari, 
his gaze intense yet filled with a newfound sense of purpose. I needed to embrace my true nature, he explained, his words tinged with regret. To fully accept who I am. And what I can become. As the realization sank in, Hikari reached out to Enkidu, a sense of solidarity passing between them. We're in this together, he declared, his voice firm with conviction. No matter what challenges we face, we'll face them together. With a nod of agreement, Enkidu offered Hikari a hand, helping him to his feet. Let's continue our journey, he said, determination shining in his eyes. Together, as equals. But the next time you just want to fight. Hikari said looking at the city. Let's do it Sumio where like the desert. Enkidu nodded, a determined glint in his eyes. Agreed. The desert it is. We'll have plenty of space to unleash our full power without endangering others. With a shared understanding, Hikari and Enkidu set off towards the vast expanse of the desert, their footsteps echoing in the empty landscape. As they journeyed onward, a sense of anticipation hung in the air, each step bringing them closer to their inevitable confrontation. As Azrael and Lucifer just watched the whole fight as they ate food. So he meet Enkidu. Lucifer said with a smirk. I wonder if he relished it is the same Enkidu from the epic of Gilagmesh, the epic he is living through. Azrael chuckled, taking a bite of his food. It certainly seems like history is repeating itself in a most intriguing way. It'll be fascinating to see how Hikari navigates his relationship with Enkidu and how it parallels the ancient tale. Lucifer nodded, a thoughtful expression crossing his face. Indeed. Enkidu's presence adds another layer to Hikari's journey, one that could shape the course of his destiny in unexpected ways. It's all part of the grand tapestry of time and fate. As with our Hikari no he had just completed one of the tales of the epic of Gilagmesh, as Enkidu and him arrived back to TRH city, as Hikari went back to managing the kingdom, and his religion. So there is battle going in the south. Hikari said looking over TRH report. Oh boy. Allows me. Enkidu said looking at Hikari. I will stop the war like how you do it, with your what you call it gate of Babylon. Hikari raised an eyebrow, impressed by Enkidu's confidence. Very well, Enkidu. Show me what you can do. With a nod from Hikari, Enkidu headed south to confront the warring factions. As he approached the battlefield, he summoned forth his power, creating a dazzling display of weapons from the gate of Babylon. The sight alone was enough to give pause to the warring armies, their eyes wide with awe and fear. Enkidu spoke with authority, his voice carrying over the battlefield. Cease this pointless conflict at once, he commanded. There is no victory to be had here, only destruction and sorrow. Let us find a peaceful resolution to our grievances. His words echoed through the ranks, stirring something within the soldiers' hearts. Slowly, they lowered their weapons, their resolve faltering in the face of Enkidu's power and conviction. With the conflict averted, Enkidu returned to the city, where Hikari awaited him with a proud smile. Well done, Enkidu. You have proven yourself a worthy ally and protector of this kingdom. Chapter 56 But Hikari said looking at him. Weapon are my things, why don't you use chain with spike on them instead? Enkidu nodded, taking Hikari's suggestion into consideration. I understand. I'll make the necessary adjustments, he replied. With Hikari's guidance, Enkidu modified his approach, summoning forth chains with spiked ends from the gate of Babylon instead of weapons. As he returned to the battlefield, he demonstrated his newfound arsenal, using the chains to disarm and restrain the warring factions without causing harm. His display of restraint and compassion resonated with the soldiers, who recognized the wisdom in seeking peace instead of perpetuating violence. The conflict was resolved more swiftly and smoothly than before, leaving the battlefield littered not with casualties, but with broken chains symbolizing the bonds of conflict that had been shattered. Enkidu returned to the city once more, where Hikari greeted him with a nod of approval. You've done well, Enkidu. Your adaptability and compassion have saved countless lives today. As Enkidu basked in Hikari's praise, a sense of fulfillment washed over him. He had always been a creature of instinct and action, but under Hikari's guidance, he had learned the value of restraint and diplomacy. Thank you, Hikari, Enkidu replied, his voice tinged with gratitude. 
I've learned much from you, and I'm honored to serve alongside you. Hikari smiled, a sense of pride evident in his eyes. And I'm grateful to have you by my side, Enkidu. Together, we can achieve great things. With the conflict in the south resolved, Hikari and Enkidu turned their attention to other pressing matters within the kingdom. They worked tirelessly to improve the lives of their citizens, investing in infrastructure, education, and healthcare to ensure the prosperity and well-being of all. Meanwhile, Lucifer and Azrael provided invaluable support behind the scenes, using their knowledge and influence to navigate the complexities of governance and diplomacy. Together, the four of them formed a formidable team, each contributing their unique strengths to the collective effort of building a better future. But amidst the progress and prosperity, shadows lurked on the horizon. Rumors of unrest and dissent spread through the kingdom, threatening to undermine the stability they had worked so hard to achieve. We must remain vigilant, Hikari declared, his voice echoing with determination. Our work is far from over, and there are still challenges ahead. But as long as we stand united, we can overcome anything that comes our way. With renewed resolve, Hikari, Enkidu, Lucifer, and Azrael embarked on the next phase of their journey, ready to confront whatever trials and tribulations awaited them. Together, they would continue to shape the destiny of their kingdom and forge a legacy that would endure for generations to come. After a long time, Hikari was with Enkidu, as they were talking, as then they saw someone flying down as she did Hikari had to do a few looks before making sure it was not Natsuki, it was girl with two bird-like wings on her head. With four angels' wings in her back, as she had a pink hair and purple eyes, as her faces matches an older-looking Natsuki, she was wearing an outfit of that would fit a goddess as she was looking at Hikari as she jumped him. You just be Gilagmesh. She said looking at him. Let me introduce MYE self, I am Ishtar. Will ha 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 ha. Hikari lapped leaving Enkidu and Ishtar confused. No. He said looking at her. Do I have to remind you about all of your lovers and what happened to them? Ishtar's expression shifted from excitement to a more subdued demeanor as she regarded Hikari with a mixture of surprise and apprehension. You dare to speak to me in such a manner? She retorted, her voice tinged with indignation. I am Ishtar, the goddess of love and war, and I will not be dismissed so easily. Hikari remained unfazed, his gaze steady as he met Ishtar's eyes. And I am Gilgames, the guardian of this kingdom, he replied evenly. I have seen the consequences of your actions in the tales of your story, and I will not allow history to repeat itself here. Enkidu watched the exchange warily, sensing the tension between the two figures before him. As a creature of instinct, he remained poised to intervene if necessary, ready to protect Hikari from any potential threat. Ishtar's wings fluttered impatiently as she regarded Hikari with a mixture of curiosity and defiance. You may think yourself powerful, mortal, she said, her voice dripping with scorn, but you cannot hope to defy a goddess. Hikari's expression remained impassive as he met Ishtar's gaze. I do not seek to defy you, Ishtar, he replied calmly. But I will not allow you to wreak havoc upon this kingdom or its people. With a flick of her wrist, Ishtar summoned a dazzling display of light, her power crackling in the air around her. You underestimate me, mortal, she declared, her voice resonating with divine authority. I will not be denied. But before Ishtar could make a move, Hikari raised a hand, his own power shimmering in response. I have faced gods and demons alike, he said, his voice unwavering. And I have always emerged victorious. Be warned, Ishtar. I will not hesitate to protect what is mine. The tension between them hung thick in the air, the clash of mortal and divine wills poised on the brink of confrontation. Enkidu watched with bated breath, ready to stand by Hikari's side no matter the outcome. And as the seconds ticked by, the fate of the kingdom hung in the balance, awaiting the resolution of this fateful encounter. Also I am also a god. Hikari said looking at Ishtar. So leaves. As with anger she left, as Hikari just sighed, Lucifer had told me that the god of Babylonian god also exist, but they are knit real god just spirits with too much power, after this Wollard only has one god and that was him. Come on Enkidu. Hikari said walking. Let's go back. Enkidu followed Hikari silently, still processing the encounter with Ishtar. As they made their way back to the city, the weight of their confrontation lingered in the air, a 
a reminder of the ever-present dangers that lurked beyond the kingdom's borders. Hikari's thoughts turned to Lucifer's words about the nature of gods in this world, and he couldn't help but wonder about the true extent of their power and influence. Despite his own abilities, he knew that challenging beings like Ishtar carried inherent risks, ones that could potentially jeopardize everything he had worked so hard to build. But as they returned to the familiar surroundings of the city, Hikari felt a sense of determination settle over him. Whatever challenges lay ahead, he would face them head-on, armed with the knowledge that he was not alone in this struggle. With Enkidu by his side and the support of his allies, Hikari knew that together they would overcome any obstacle and continue to shape the destiny of their kingdom. And as they entered the city gates, ready to confront whatever the future held, Hikari's resolve remained unwavering, his determination unshakable in the face of adversity. Wait why did she come for me? Hikari said to himself thinking. She should be mad I used the name Gilagmesh, unless. As then a light bulb went up on Hikari's head. As he ran through his hall as he kicked and door as there was Lucifer and Azrael L. Chilling. You motherfucker. Hikari said looking at them. You never told me, about this, that we are back the time of Gilagmesh, no wonder you guys said noting, I creating the epic of Gilagmesh aren't I, no wonder you guys didn't have a problem of me picking the name Gilagmesh. Hikari said to them with anger in his voice. Lucifer and Azrael exchanged a glance, realizing that their secret had been uncovered. They had hoped to shield Hikari from the truth, fearing that the knowledge of his role in shaping history would burden him with unnecessary pressure. Hikari, we didn't tell you because we wanted to spare you from the weight of that knowledge, Lucifer explained, his expression grave we knew that discovering the truth would be a shock, but we believed it was for the best. Azrael nodded in agreement. We wanted you to focus on your mission here, on building the kingdom and guiding its people, he added. We didn't want the knowledge of your connection to the Epic of Gilgamesh to distract you from that. Hikari's anger simmered as he processed their words. He understood their intentions, but the revelation left him feeling conflicted. On one hand, he was frustrated by their deception, but on the other, he recognized the wisdom in their decision to keep him in the dark. Taking a deep breath, Hikari calmed himself, realizing that dwelling on the past wouldn't change their current situation. Fine, he said finally, his tone softer. But from now on, no more secrets. We face whatever comes our way together, understood? Lucifer and Azrael nodded in agreement, relieved that their bond remained unbroken despite the revelation. With their understanding reaffirmed, they knew that together they could overcome any challenge, no matter how daunting it may seem. But how did you find out? I mean how did you put two and two together? Hikari leaned back, a smirk playing on his lips. Well, it started with Ishtar's visit, he explained. Her reaction to me using the name Gilgamesh made me suspicious. Then, when I thought about it more, it all clicked into place. The time period, my role in shaping events, it all made sense. He glanced at Lucifer and Azrael, his expression serious. You forget, I'm not just a king and a god. I'm also a detective, he said with a wink. Nothing gets past me. Lucifer chuckled, acknowledging Hikari's astuteness. Fair point, he conceded. But you have to admit, it's been quite the adventure, hasn't it? Hikari nodded, a mixture of frustration and amusement evident on his face. Adventure indeed, he replied. But it would have been nice to know the full extent of it from the beginning. Azrael interjected, his tone apologetic. We were trying to avoid disrupting the natural flow of events, he explained. But perhaps we underestimated your ability to adapt. Hikari sighed, realizing their intentions were rooted in their desire to preserve the timeline. I understand, he said, his tone softening. But going forward, let's try to communicate better, okay? With a nod of agreement from Lucifer and Azrael, they resolved to be more transparent with Hikari moving forward, knowing that their collective efforts would shape the course of history in ways they couldn't yet imagine. As they continued their discussion, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement at the prospect of facing whatever challenges lay ahead. Armed with the knowledge of his true role in the Epic of Gilgamesh and the support of his loyal companions. But can you tell me one thing? Hikari said looking at Azrael and Lucifer. Why the does Ishtar look like a grown-up Natsuki, do you how confusing that was for me to see a grown-up Verison of my girlfriend? 
Lucifer and Azrael exchanged a knowing glance before Azrael spoke up. Ishtar's appearance is likely just a coincidence, he explained. These beings often take forms that resonate with mortals. It's possible that her resemblance to Natsuki is purely incidental. Hikari nodded, accepting the explanation. I suppose stranger things have happened, he mused. But let's hope there are no more surprises like that in store for us. With a shared chuckle, the trio resumed their conversation, ready to face whatever the future held for them in this ancient world of gods and legends. Also hope you're ready to fight the bull. Remember what happened in the epic of Gilagmesh after Gilagmesh rejected Ishtar. Hikari's expression grew serious as he nodded, his mind already racing with plans and strategies. I remember, he replied resolutely. But unlike Gilgamesh, I won't be facing this challenge alone. With Enkidu by my side and your guidance, we'll overcome whatever obstacles come our way. With renewed determination, Hikari and his companions prepared for the trials ahead, knowing that their journey was far from over and that greater challenges awaited them in the days to come. Meanwhile in the place of the Babylonians, gods, Ishtar was there bagging to her father. Please father let me use the bull if heaven. Ishtar said looking at him. Please, will it is either that or I break open the underworld and relish the dead. What the hell sis? Ereskigal said looking at her twin. Really you're doing this just because you got rejected. The tension in the divine realm was palpable as Ishtar's plea echoed through the chamber. Ereshkigal, her twin sister and ruler of the underworld, watched with a mixture of concern and exasperation. Ishtar, you know the consequences of your actions, Ereshkigal admonished, her voice tinged with frustration. Using the bull of heaven to exact revenge on Gilgamesh will only bring more suffering to both mortals and gods alike. But Ishtar was undeterred, her determination fueled by wounded pride and a desire for vengeance. I don't care about the consequences, she declared defiantly. I won't let Gilgamesh defy me without consequence. Father, please grant me this boon. Anu, the supreme god and father of Ishtar and Ereshkigal, regarded his daughters with a solemn expression. He knew the implications of Ishtar's request and the potential repercussions it could unleash upon the mortal world. Ishtar, you must consider the greater good, Anu implored, his voice carrying the weight of authority. Reckless actions will only lead to further chaos and destruction. I cannot grant your request. Ishtar's eyes blazed with fury as she glared at her father, her resolve unshaken. Very well, she spat, her voice dripping with venom. If you won't help me, then I'll take matters into my own hands. With a defiant toss of her hair, Ishtar stormed out of the divine chamber, leaving her father and sister to contemplate the repercussions of her unchecked ambition. Find the dead it is. Ishtar said ready to walk to the underworld. Don't blame me. You're it. Anu said looking at his daughter. Take the bull, just don't get it eliminate. Really father? Ereskigal said looking at her father, she knew Ishtar was the favorite but really. You know what saves us the paper works, and my underworld gate is not destroyed. Anu sighed heavily, knowing that his decision carried grave consequences. Very well, Ishtar. Take the bull of heaven, but heed my warning, do not let your pride blind you to the dangers it poses. And Ereshkigal, prepare the underworld for the repercussions of Ishtar's actions. With a heavy heart, Anu watched as Ishtar departed, her determination driving her towards a path of conflict and chaos. Ereshkigal could only shake her head in resignation, already bracing herself for the inevitable fallout of her sister's impulsive actions. The fate of mortals and gods alike hung in the balance as the divine drama unfolded, with the bull of heaven poised to wreak havoc upon the world. Chapter 57 As the days passed, Hikari and Enkidu prepared themselves for the inevitable confrontation with the bull of heaven. Despite knowing the dangers that lay ahead, they remained resolute in their determination to protect the kingdom and its people. Meanwhile, Ishtar made her way to the celestial realm, accompanied by the fierce bull of heaven. As she descended upon the mortal world, her eyes burned with determination and a thirst for vengeance against Hikari, the one who had dared to reject her advances. In the kingdom, Hikari and Enkidu stood ready, their weapons drawn and their resolve unwavering. They knew that facing the bull of heaven would be no easy task, but they were prepared to do whatever it took to emerge victorious. 
As the ground trembled beneath their feet, signaling the arrival of the celestial beast, Hikari and Enkidu braced themselves for the battle that was about to unfold. With a roar that shook the heavens, the bull charged towards them, its massive horns gleaming in the sunlight. Hikari and Enkidu met the bull head-on, their swords clashing against its formidable hide. With each strike, they fought with all their strength, determined to overcome this formidable foe and protect their kingdom from its wrath. As the days passed, Hikari and Enkidu prepared themselves for the inevitable confrontation with the Bull of Heaven. Despite knowing the dangers that lay ahead, they remained resolute in their determination to protect the kingdom and its people. Meanwhile, Ishtar made her way to the celestial realm, accompanied by the fierce Bull of Heaven. As she descended upon the mortal world, her eyes burned with determination and a thirst for vengeance against Hikari, the one who had dared to reject her advances. In the kingdom, Hikari and Enkidu stood ready, their weapons drawn and their resolve unwavering. They knew that facing the Bull of Heaven would be no easy task, but they were prepared to do whatever it took to emerge victorious. As the ground trembled beneath their feet, signaling the arrival of the celestial beast, Hikari and Enkidu braced themselves for the battle that was about to unfold. With a roar that shook the heavens, the bull charged towards them, its massive horns gleaming in the sunlight. Hikari and Enkidu met the bull head-on, their swords clashing against its formidable hide. With each strike, they fought with all their strength, determined to overcome this formidable foe and protect their kingdom from its wrath. The battle raged on, the clash of steel and the roar of the bull echoing throughout the land. Despite the ferocity of their opponent, Hikari and Enkidu refused to yield, drawing upon their courage and skill to hold their ground against the relentless onslaught. As the sun began to set on the battlefield, Hikari and Enkidu finally gained the upper hand, their relentless determination and unwavering resolve proving to be more than a match for the Bull of Heaven. As the bull then sent Enkidu flying Hikari holder it by his horn. This is crazy. Hikari y'all trying to hold back the bull. Ishtar is doing all of this just because I rejected her what? With all his strength, Hikari grappled with the raging bull of heaven, its immense power threatening to overwhelm him. Enkidu lay sprawled on the ground, stunned from the impact of the bull's attack. Gritting his teeth against the strain, Hikari struggled to maintain his grip on the bull's horn, his muscles trembling with exertion. Sweat beaded on his brow as he fought to keep the beast at bay. Ishtar's vendetta knows no bounds, Hikari growled through clenched teeth, his voice laced with frustration and anger. But I won't let her petty jealousy destroy everything we've built. With a surge of determination, Hikari summoned all his strength, channeling his inner power to push back against the bull's relentless onslaught. Inch by inch, he began to gain ground, slowly but surely regaining control of the situation. Enkidu staggered to his feet, his eyes blazing with determination as he joined Hikari in the struggle. Together, they pushed back against the bull with all their might, refusing to yield to its overwhelming strength. As the battle raged on, Hikari and Enkidu fought with a ferocity born of desperation, their hearts ablaze with the fire of defiance. With each passing moment, they drew closer to victory, their resolve unshakable in the face of adversity. And finally, with one last mighty effort, Hikari and Enkidu succeeded in overpowering the Bull of Heaven, sending it crashing to the ground in defeat. As the dust settled and the echoes of battle faded away, they stood victorious, their bond stronger than ever in the face of adversity. Ishtar may have unleashed her fury upon us, Hikari declared, his voice ringing out with determination, but she underestimates the power of our unity. Together, we will weather any storm and emerge victorious. With that, Hikari and Enkidu stood tall, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, their spirits unbroken and their resolve unwavering in the face of destiny's trials. As then the bull got back up as it sent a powerful blast, as then he jumped away as he looked at the bull. It no more holding back. Hikari said as his body glowing. Limit break. As then multiple invisible chains broke, as his body was glowing. Let me show you the power of real God the one and only God of this world. Hikari said looking at the bull. This is how I am. With a surge of power, Hikari unleashed his true potential his aura radiating with divine energy as he faced down the bowl of heaven. The ground trembled beneath his feet, and the air crackled with electricity as he prepared to unleash his ultimate attack. In a flash of blinding light, Hikari's form transformed, his body becoming infused with the essence of a god. 
His eyes glowed with a fierce determination, and his every movement exuded an otherworldly grace and power. As the bull of heaven charged towards him once more, Hikari stood his ground, his gaze locked onto his opponent with unwavering focus. With a single gesture, he summoned forth the full extent of his divine abilities, channeling the very essence of creation itself. A torrent of energy erupted from Hikari's outstretched hands, engulfing the bull in a swirling vortex of light and sound. The earth shook and the heavens trembled as the full force of Hikari's power was unleashed upon his adversary. With a mighty roar, the bull of heaven was consumed by the onslaught, its form dissolving into nothingness as Hikari's divine energy purged it from existence. In the aftermath of the battle, silence descended upon the battlefield, broken only by the sound of Hikari's steady breathing. As the dust settled, Hikari lowered his arms, the glow of his divine aura fading away as he returned to his mortal form. He stood victorious amidst the wreckage of the battlefield, his chest heaving with exertion but his spirit undaunted. That's the power of a true god, Hikari declared, his voice ringing out with quiet confidence. No force in this world can stand against the might of Elysium. With a sense of satisfaction, Hikari turned away from the battlefield, his gaze fixed on the horizon. The challenges ahead may be many, but with his newfound strength and the unwavering support of his allies, he was ready to face whatever trials fate had in store. Know about you. Hikari said looking at Ishtar who was sweeting bullets. You. As then he punched her on the head anime style, as she holed her head as he did a few times. Have your parents thought you noting? He said pulling on her ear. Just, shut up and take your pet bull and leave. Ishtar winced in pain as Hikari reprimanded her, his words hitting home with a forceful clarity. She had underestimated his strength and resolve, and now she found herself humbled before him. With a sheepish expression, Ishtar nodded meekly, her pride wounded but her resolve unbroken. I understand, she murmured, her voice tinged with defeat. I will take the bull and leave. I'm sorry. Hikari released her ear and watched as Ishtar retreated, her expression a mixture of shame and frustration. As she disappeared from view, he let out a sigh of relief, the tension of the encounter slowly dissipating. Turning to Enkidu, who had been watching the exchange with a mixture of concern and amusement, Hikari offered a wry smile. Well, that was certainly unexpected, he remarked, rubbing the back of his neck sheepishly. But I suppose it's just another day in the life of Gilgamesh, huh? Enkidu chuckled softly, nodding in agreement. Indeed, he replied, his eyes twinkling with amusement. But it seems that even the mightiest of gods can be brought low by a well-placed punch. With a shared laugh, Hikari and Enkidu turned away from the battlefield, their bond strengthened by yet another trial overcome. As they walked side by side, ready to face whatever challenges awaited them, they knew that together, they were unstoppable. Again they are not gods just spirits with too much power. Hikari said to Enkidu as he looked at Ishtar flying away. They are only considered god because of their powers that is not a real god, not same for them in other universe. Other universe. Enkidu said confused about the word. What does that mean? Yeah no. Hikari said looking at his friend. Another day not today. Enkidu nodded in understanding, recognizing that there were some concepts beyond his current comprehension. Instead, he focused on the present moment, grateful for the bond he shared with Hikari and the adventures they faced together. As they continued their journey, Hikari and Enkidu encountered new challenges and adversaries, each one testing their strength and resolve. But with their friendship as their greatest weapon, they knew that no obstacle was insurmountable. As the sun began to set on the horizon, casting a warm golden glow over the land, Hikari and Enkidu walked side by side, ready to face whatever the future held. For in each other, they had found the strength, courage, and companionship to conquer any trial that came their way. As the next day arrives as Hikari just looks at Lucifer. You could have destroyed that bull. Hikari said looking at the smirking face of Lucifer. But instead you just saw the fight while eating food and you as well Asriel. Lucifer chuckled softly, his eyes twinkling with mischief. Ah, but where's the fun in that? He replied, a playful grin spreading across his face. Besides, watching you handle it was far more entertaining. You always find a way to surprise us. Asriel nodded in agreement, 
a wry smile playing on his lips. Indeed, he chimed in. Your strength and ingenuity never cease to amaze us, Hikari. It's a testament to your abilities as a leader and a warrior. Hikari rolled his eyes, though a hint of amusement danced in his gaze. Well, next time, how about you lend a hand instead of just spectating? He suggested, though there was a fondness in his tone. After all, we're in this together. With a shared laugh, the trio continued on their journey, knowing that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them as a team. As then the next few months and day passes and year passed during this time Hikari Religion had spread all over the world and with the amount of wars he fought, he meet many other so-called gods of other religions. Again just high-level sports that he had no problems defeating or becoming goof-frined as two years had passed Hikari was now twenty-two he was happy to know when they go back Lucifer will turn back to his nineteen-year-old self, as he was looking at two statues being built one was of him and the other Enkidu. So after I unified the world my people are making this. Hikari said looking at the amount of magic being used. No everyone has magic what do you say Enkidu? Enkidu nodded, his gaze fixed on the statues taking shape before them. It's quite a sight, he remarked, a hint of awe in his voice. To think that our journey has led us to this moment, where we are revered as symbols of unity and strength. Hikari smiled, a sense of pride swelling within him. Indeed, he agreed. It's a testament to the power of our vision and the determination of our people to create a better world. As they watched the statues being sculpted with care and precision, Hikari couldn't help but reflect on the trials and triumphs they had faced together. From battles won to alliances forged, their journey had been marked by resilience and camaraderie. And to think, Hikari mused, turning to Enkidu, this is only the beginning. There's still so much more we can achieve, together. Enkidu nodded, a smile gracing his features. Yes, he replied, his voice filled with determination. As long as we stand united, there's nothing we can't accomplish. With renewed resolve, Hikari and Enkidu turned their gaze towards the horizon, ready to face whatever challenges awaited them in the ever-expanding world they had helped to shape. As Hikari arrived back to his room, he saw the same kid if the tyrant king looking at him. One eye level everything is your. He said looking at the no teen. Be careful how you rule. As then he saw Lucifer as they walked. Let me just one epic left the quest for Fail's quest of immortality. The one quest Gilagmesh failed, and so will I, personally I will just give the snake the flower. Lucifer chuckled softly, nodding in agreement. Ah, the quest for immortality, he said, a wistful expression crossing his features. A pursuit that has eluded many throughout history. Hikari sighed, a sense of resignation washing over him. Indeed, he replied. But perhaps it's not the immortality itself that matters, but rather the journey and the lessons learned along the way. They continued walking, the weight of their impending quest hanging heavy in the air. Despite the uncertainty that lay ahead, Hikari knew that he would face it with courage and determination, just as he had faced every challenge before. And who knows, Hikari mused, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Perhaps the true immortality lies in the legacy we leave behind, in the hearts and minds of those we've touched. With those words, they pressed on, ready to embark on the final chapter of their epic journey, guided by the lessons of the past and the promise of the future. Chapter 58 Yeah I have been gone for a while, reason I have been busy with my other fanfic anyway let's get to the story. In the midst of a bustling kingdom, Hikari sat upon his throne, contemplating the next step in his journey. The quest for immortality loomed before him, a daunting yet tantalizing prospect. He knew the risks and the failures of those who had come before him, but the allure of eternal life beckoned nonetheless. As he pondered his next move, Lucifer approached, a knowing look in his eyes. The quest for immortality, he remarked, a path fraught with danger and uncertainty. Are you truly prepared to embark on such a journey? Hikari nodded, determination burning in his gaze. I am, he replied resolutely. For the sake of my people and the future of this kingdom, I will seek out the key to immortality, no matter the cost. With Lucifer's support and guidance, Hikari began to prepare for the quest ahead. He gathered his most trusted allies, including Enkidu, Azrael, and a select few others who had proven their loyalty and skill time and again. Together, 
They delved into ancient texts and consulted with wise sages in search of clues that would lead them to the coveted prize. Each piece of information they uncovered brought them closer to their goal, but also revealed the dangers that lay ahead. As they journeyed across distant lands and faced countless trials, Hikari remained steadfast in his resolve. He encountered mythical beasts, treacherous terrain, and rival factions vying for the same prize. Yet, with unwavering determination and the support of his companions, he pressed on. As Hikari and his companions ventured deeper into the temple, they encountered a series of elaborate traps and puzzles designed to test their wit and skill. Each chamber they entered presented new challenges, from riddles that demanded clever solutions to chambers filled with deadly traps triggered by the slightest misstep. Despite the perilous obstacles that lay in their path, Hikari remained resolute, leading his companions with unwavering determination. Together, they relied on their collective knowledge and expertise to overcome each challenge, inching closer to their ultimate goal with each passing trial. As they delved deeper into the heart of the temple, they finally reached a chamber shrouded in mystery, its walls adorned with ancient symbols and glyphs that hinted at the secrets within. At the center of the chamber stood a pedestal, upon which rested a radiant gemstone pulsating with otherworldly energy. With cautious steps, Hikari approached the pedestal, his heart pounding with anticipation. Could this be the key to immortality they had been searching for? Or was it merely another test, a final trial to determine their worthiness? As Hikari reached out to grasp the gemstone, a sudden surge of power enveloped him, filling him with a sense of enlightenment and clarity. In that moment, he understood the true nature of immortality not as a mere extension of one's life, but as a legacy that transcended the boundaries of time and mortality. With newfound resolve, Hikari turned to his companions, his eyes ablaze with determination. Immortality is not found in the pursuit of endless life, he declared, his voice echoing through the chamber. It is found in the memories we leave behind, in the lives we touch, and in the legacy we create for future generations. With those words, Hikari reached out and touched the gemstone, channeling its power to unlock the true potential within himself. In that moment, he became more than just a mortal man he became a beacon of hope and inspiration, a symbol of strength and resilience for all who followed in his footsteps. As the light of the gemstone enveloped him, Hikari's form began to radiate with a divine glow, his spirit transcending the confines of his mortal vessel. He had achieved true immortality, not in the physical sense, but in the everlasting legacy he had forged through his actions and his deeds. With their quest complete and their mission fulfilled, Hikari and his companions emerged from the temple, their hearts filled with a newfound sense of purpose and fulfillment. Though their journey had been fraught with peril and uncertainty, they had emerged victorious, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead with courage and conviction. As they returned to their kingdom, they were greeted with cheers and celebration, their triumph heralded as a triumph for all who had dared to dream of a better future. And though Hikari knew that his quest for immortality was far from over, he also knew that as long as he remained true to his principles and his beliefs, his legacy would endure for generations to come. Come on let's take a shower. Hikari said as the group went to take a shower. I mens we can't go to the kingdom like this. As they were bathing as unknown to them as then a snake came and ate the gemstone as it did its shaded skin, as the group saw this. You little. Enkidu said looking at the snake. Hikari come down. As then Hikari just laughed, as Evirone heard the laugh as he saw everyone staring at him in confusion. What's so funny? Azrael asked, puzzled by Hikari's sudden outburst of laughter. Hikari composed himself, wiping away tears of amusement. Sorry, sorry, he said, regaining his composure. It's just. That snake just swallowed the gemstone. We've been on this epic quest for immortality, and now it's. Well, inside a snake. Enkidu shook his head, a wry smile tugging at his lips. Well, that's one way to throw a wrench into our plans, he remarked. Lucifer chuckled, seemingly unfazed by the unexpected turn of events. Looks like we've got ourselves a new quest, he said, flashing a mischievous grin. Time to track down that snake and get our gemstone back. With renewed determination, the group finished their shower and set out to retrieve the gemstone from the elusive snake. Little did they know, their journey was far from over, and the challenges that lay ahead would test their resolve like never before. But with their bond forged through friendship and camaraderie, 
they were ready to face whatever obstacles came their way, united in their quest for immortality and the legacy they would leave behind. As then the group left arriving the an island, as they stayed it for a few days Enkidu said he will stay here. All right then. Hikari said looking at Enkidu. We will see you in a few years. Enkidu nodded, a sense of determination in his eyes. I'll hold down the fort here, he said, flashing a reassuring smile. You guys go on ahead and retrieve that gemstone. I'll be ready and waiting when you return. With a final farewell, Hikari, Lucifer, and Azrael set sail once more, leaving Enkidu behind on the island. As they sailed across the vast ocean, anticipation and excitement filled the air, knowing that their quest for immortality was about to reach its climax. Little did they know, the challenges awaiting them would push them to their limits and test the strength of their bonds like never before. But with Enkidu holding down the fort and their determination unwavering, they were ready to face whatever awaited them on their journey. So I guess it is time we go back to the present. Lucifer said looking at Hikari. Correct all the quest of the epic of Gilagmesh is finally over. Yeah. Before I go let's give the kid the kingdom back I miss Natsuki and my family. With a nod of agreement, Lucifer and Azrael accompanied Hikari back to the present, where they began their journey. As they arrived, Hikari wasted no time in restoring the kingdom to its rightful heir, ensuring that peace and prosperity would reign once more. Standing before the young ruler, Hikari imparted words of wisdom and guidance, sharing the lessons he had learned throughout his epic journey. With a sense of fulfillment and closure, he bid farewell to the kingdom and its people, knowing that they were in good hands. As they prepared to return to their own time, Hikari couldn't help but feel a pang of nostalgia for the adventures and challenges they had faced together. Yet, he was also filled with excitement at the prospect of reuniting with Natsuki and his family, eager to share the tales of his incredible journey with them. With a final glance back at the kingdom, Hikari, Lucifer, and Azrael stepped through the portal, ready to embark on the next chapter of their lives. As they vanished into the swirling vortex of time, the echoes of their adventures lingered, a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity and the bonds that transcend time and space. Also one more thing. I found out that I was Gilagmesh. Natsuki's eyes widened in surprise. Gilgamesh? As in the legendary king? Hikari nodded solemnly. Yes, it seems that in the world we visited, I was living through the events of the epic of Gilgamesh. It was quite the revelation. His family exchanged glances, processing this newfound information. Haruka spoke up, her voice filled with awe. So you were a king and a hero in another time. That's incredible. Hikari shrugged modestly. I guess you could say that. But now, I'm just happy to be back here with all of you. As they sat together, sharing stories and catching up on lost time, Hikari couldn't help but feel grateful for the journey he had undertaken. Though he may have been Gilgamesh in another life, he knew that his true home and heart lay with his family and loved ones in the present. Not actually. It was past so basically Hikari made a time loop. Natsuki furrowed her brow in confusion. A time loop? What do you mean? Hikari explained, it's like this. When we went back in time, I inadvertently became part of the events of the Epic of Gilgamesh. But because of the time loop, I was both living through those events and simultaneously shaping them. So, in a way, I was both Gilgamesh and myself. His family exchanged bewildered looks, trying to wrap their heads around the concept of a time loop. Haruka spoke up, so, you were living in two different times at once. That sounds... complicated. Hikari nodded. It was, but now that we're back here, it's all in the past. Literally. With a sense of relief, they settled into the comfort of the present moment, grateful to be together once again. Oh wait. Hikari said as he created a portal. Gotta do something. As he stepped it to the portal Natsuki and his family just watch him. Will that is new. Haruka said seeing Hikari leave sense when can he do that. Natsuki shrugged, a bemused expression on her face. Who knows. With Hikari, anything is possible. As they watched the portal close behind him, they couldn't help but wonder where he had gone and what new adventure awaited him. As meanwhile in particular island Hikare looked around before he screamed the name. 
Hey Enkidu. Hikari screamed on the top of his long. Are you their old friend? The echoes of Hikari's voice faded into the distance as he waited for a response, the island silent except for the gentle rustle of leaves in the breeze. After a moment, a familiar figure emerged from the foliage. Hikari. Enkidu called out, his voice tinged with surprise as he approached. Is that really you? Hikari grinned, relief flooding through him at the sight of his old friend. Yeah, it's me, he replied, stepping forward to greet Enkidu with a hearty handshake. I couldn't leave without saying goodbye. Enkidu smiled warmly, clasping Hikari's hand firmly. I'm glad you came back, he said earnestly. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten about me. Never, Hikari assured him, his expression sincere. You've been a true friend, Enkidu, and I wanted to thank you for everything. The two friends shared a moment of quiet camaraderie, the bond forged through countless adventures strengthening with each passing second. So, what now? Enkidu asked, breaking the silence. Are you here to stay, or is this just a fleeting visit? Hikari shook his head, a wistful smile playing on his lips. I can't stay, he replied regretfully. But I wanted to make sure you were okay before I left. And to let you know that no matter where I go, you'll always be a part of me. Enkidu nodded, understanding shining in his eyes. And you'll always be a part of me, he echoed, his voice tinged with emotion. Thank you, Hikari, for everything. With a final embrace, Hikari and Enkidu parted ways, each carrying with them memories of their time together and the unbreakable bond of friendship that would endure across time and distance. As then Hikari opens his portal back to his house. Come on let's go. Hikari said looking at Enkidu. Let's go Enkidu. As they both stepped through they saw Hikari family. Everyone meet Enkidu. Hikari said looking at his family. Yes the same Enkidu from my epic of Gilagmesh also Enkidu this my family. Hikari's family looked on in astonishment as Enkidu stepped forward, a mixture of curiosity and wonder in his eyes. Hikari's parents exchanged glances, clearly taken aback by the unexpected arrival of their son's legendary friend. Enkidu, huh? Hikari's father said, a hint of disbelief in his voice. You've certainly led an interesting life, son. Hikari chuckled, a warm smile gracing his features as he introduced Enkidu to each member of his family, recounting tales of their adventures together and the bond they shared. Enkidu, for his part, greeted Hikari's family with a mixture of humility and gratitude, expressing his gratitude for their hospitality. As they sat down to share a meal, laughter and conversation filled the air, the warmth of family and friendship enveloping them all. For Hikari, having Enkidu by his side once more felt like coming full circle, a reminder of the journey he had undertaken and the connections he had forged along the way. As the evening wore on and the stars began to twinkle in the night sky, Hikari couldn't help but feel a sense of contentment wash over him. Surrounded by loved ones, both old and new, he knew that no matter where life took him, he would always carry the memories of his adventures with Enkidu in his heart. And as they bid farewell to Enkidu, sending him off with well wishes and promises to meet again, Hikari felt a sense of peace settle over him. The quest for immortality may have eluded him, but in the end, he had found something far more precious the enduring bonds of friendship and family that would last a lifetime. Chapter 59 As the next morning arrived Hikari was one again naked as so was Natsuki, Natsuki was surprised that Hikari never cheat on her when he was in the past so they fucked all night. As they got and got ready their house was attacked as Enkidu was sent flying as everyone saw it was Ishtar, only Hikari knew meanwhile Natsuki and his family was confused looking at the Natsuki older look alike. Oh you're back. Hikari said looking at her. What do you want this time Ishtar? Ishtar stood before them, her expression a mix of determination and fury. You think you can outsmart me, Gilgamesh? She spat, her voice dripping with disdain. I won't rest until I've taken what's rightfully mine. Hikari's family watched in shock as the scene unfolded before them, struggling to make sense of the chaos that had erupted in their home. Natsuki, in particular, looked on with wide eyes, her confusion evident as she tried to process the sudden appearance of Ishtar and the strange familiarity she felt with her. Meanwhile, Enkidu recovered from the attack, his eyes narrowing as he prepared to defend his friends and family. We won't let you harm them, he growled, his voice filled with determination. 
Hikari stepped forward, his gaze steady as he faced Ishtar. You want a fight, Ishtar? He said, his tone firm. Then you've got one. But this time, it ends here. With that, Hikari summoned his powers, ready to face Ishtar head-on and put an end to her relentless pursuit once and for all. As the battle raged on, the fate of Hikari's family and the safety of their home hung in the balance, but with courage and determination on their side, they were prepared to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Wait stop. Natsuki said looking at Hikari. What is going on and why does she look like me and did you say Ishtar, but I thought you were the only god. Hikari turned to Natsuki, his expression softening as he realized he needed to explain the situation to her and his family. I'm sorry, Natsuki, he began, taking her hand gently. This is Ishtar, a powerful being from another time and place. She's been pursuing me for reasons I'll explain later. As Natsuki absorbed the information, her eyes widened in disbelief. Another time and place? She repeated, trying to comprehend the gravity of the situation. And she looks like me? Hikari nodded solemnly. Yes, it's complicated, he admitted. But right now, we need to focus on protecting our family and defeating Ishtar. I'll explain everything once we've dealt with this threat. With determination in his heart, Hikari turned back to face Ishtar, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead and protect those he held dear. Also about the god thing. Hikari said looking at Natsuki. Her and her fellow gods are noting but higher level spirit that thinks they are god after all I am the only god. Natsuki nodded, trying to wrap her head around the concept. So, you're saying they're just powerful beings, not actual gods? Hikari sighed, running a hand through his hair. Exactly. In their realm, they may be revered as gods, but in reality, they're just beings with extraordinary powers. As the gravity of the situation sank in, Natsuki looked at Hikari with a mixture of concern and determination. Whatever they are, we'll face them together, she said firmly, squeezing his hand reassuringly. Hikari smiled, grateful for Natsuki's unwavering support. Thank you, he said softly. Together, we can overcome anything. With renewed resolve, they prepared to confront Ishtar and protect their family from her wrath. As then everyone can hear a bonk as they saw a blonde version of Natsuki hitting Ishtar, Hikari knew this was a rescigal out of the two he liked her better. Sorry about this Gilagmesh or do you go by Hikar now? Ereskigal said looking at Hikari. Either way my sister has made another mistake she sensed your presence finally and came here, Sisyrusly we have been trying to make sure she doesn't but she finally one year of non-stop sleep and it was all for nothing. Hikari nodded, understanding Ereskigal's predicament. Thank you for trying to keep her away, he said sincerely. But now that she's here, we'll have to deal with her. Ereskigal nodded in agreement. I'll do what I can to help, she said determinately. Ishtar may be my sister, but I won't let her harm you or your loved ones. With their resolve strengthened by Ereskigal's support, Hikari and his allies prepared to face Ishtar and protect their home from her wrath. As Ishtar prepared to launch another attack, Hikari stepped forward, his expression unwavering. Ishtar, enough. He commanded, his voice resonating with authority. You've caused enough trouble. Leave now, or face the consequences. Ishtar scoffed, her eyes blazing with fury. You dare to challenge me, Gilgamesh? She spat, her voice dripping with contempt. I am a goddess. I will not be dictated to by a mere mortal. Hikari remained undeterred, his resolve firm. Your status as a goddess means nothing here, he declared. You may have power, but I have the strength of will and the determination to protect what's important to me. With a flick of his wrist, Hikari summoned a barrier of light, shielding himself and his loved ones from Ishtar's attacks. This ends now, he stated firmly, his eyes glowing with determination. Ishtar, realizing that she was outmatched, begrudgingly backed down, disappearing in a whirlwind of fury and frustration. As the dust settled, Hikari let out a sigh of relief, knowing that they had narrowly averted disaster once again. Turning to his family and allies, he offered them a reassuring smile. We're safe now, he said, his voice calm but resolute. Let's focus on rebuilding and moving forward. With Ishtar's threat temporarily neutralized, 
Hikari and his companions set about repairing the damage to their home and fortifying their defenses against future threats. Despite the challenges they faced, they knew that as long as they stood united, they could overcome any obstacle that came their way. So, um. Hikari Mon sighed looking at Ishtar and Ereskigal. Wanna join us for lunch? Ishtar and Ereskigal exchanged surprised glances before Ereskigal spoke up, her tone cautious yet intrigued. That's. Unexpected, she admitted, eyeing Hikari warily. But I suppose a truce is in order for now. Ishtar, still seething with anger, remained silent, but her expression softened slightly at the prospect of food. Reluctantly, she nodded in agreement. With tensions eased, Hikari led the group to a nearby dining area where a feast had been prepared. As they sat down to eat, conversation flowed cautiously at first, but gradually became more relaxed as they shared stories and laughter. Throughout the meal, Hikari took the opportunity to learn more about Ishtar and Ereskigal, gaining insight into their motivations and personalities. Despite their differences and past conflicts, he found common ground with them, realizing that they were not so different from himself and his companions. As lunch came to an end, Hikari extended an olive branch to Ishtar and Ereskigal, offering them a chance to work together for the greater good. To his surprise, they both seemed open to the idea, recognizing the importance of setting aside their differences in the face of greater threats. With a newfound understanding and a tentative truce in place, Hikari and his unlikely allies parted ways, each taking with them a glimmer of hope for a more peaceful future. As they went their separate paths, Hikari couldn't help but feel optimistic about the possibilities that lay ahead. So, um. Ereskigal said looking at Natsuki. Are you sure you're not one of our decided, like the amount of magic it is on the level of a demi-god and not just that you also look like me and my sister? Natsuki blinked in surprise at the unexpected question, her gaze shifting between Ereskigal and Hikari. I don't think so, she replied, her voice tinged with uncertainty. I mean, I've never had any powers or anything like that before. Hikari nodded in agreement, coming to Natsuki's defense. She's just a regular human, he affirmed, placing a reassuring hand on her shoulder. But she's extraordinary in her own way. Ereskigal studied Natsuki intently, her eyes narrowing slightly as if searching for any sign of deception. After a moment of silence, she nodded in acceptance. Very well, she conceded. But if you ever discover otherwise, you know where to find us. With that, Ereskigal bid farewell to Hikari and Natsuki, disappearing into the shadows with Ishtar in tow. As they vanished from sight, Natsuki let out a breath she hadn't realized she was holding, relieved that the encounter had ended peacefully. Turning to Hikari, she offered him a grateful smile. Thanks for standing up for me, she said softly. I don't know what I would do without you. Hikari returned her smile, his eyes warm with affection. You don't have to worry, he assured her. I'll always be here to protect you, no matter what. And with that promise, they continued on their journey, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, together. I think they are your ancestors. Hikari said looking at Natsuki. It will explain why your magic was so powerful and unstable back when I first meet you and NTK just that why you always keep yo with even do you're not a god. Natsuki listened intently, absorbing Hikari's words with a mix of surprise and curiosity. Ancestors. She repeated, her brow furrowing in thought. But how could that be possible? I've never heard anything about my family having any connections to gods or anything like that. Hikari nodded, understanding her skepticism. It's just a theory, he admitted. But it would explain a lot. Your powerful magic, the resemblance to Ereskigal and Ishtar. Maybe there's more to your family history than you know. I mean I have an idea. Haruka said looking at Natsuki. A blood test. As the next day arrived as Ereskigal and Ishtar came, they gave their blood as it fuses with Natsuki and it was 99% match. The atmosphere in the room grew tense as the results of the blood test were revealed. Natsuki stared at the report in disbelief, her heart pounding with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. Could it be true? Was she really connected to these ancient beings? Hikari placed a reassuring hand on her shoulder, offering silent support as they waited for her to process the shocking revelation. Well, I guess that settles it, he said, breaking the silence. 
you do have some divine ancestry after all. Natsuki's mind raced with questions and uncertainties. What did this mean for her identity? How would it change her relationship with Hikari and her family? And most importantly, what role did she play in the grand tapestry of gods and mortals? Ereskigal and Ishtar watched Natsuki closely, their expressions a mix of curiosity and concern. We understand if this is a lot to take in, Ereskigal said softly. But know that you are not alone. We will help you navigate this new chapter of your life, whatever it may bring. With their guidance and support, Natsuki felt a glimmer of hope amidst the uncertainty. She may have unearthed a truth that challenged everything she thought she knew about herself, but she was determined to embrace her heritage and discover the secrets that lay hidden within her bloodline. Wait a minute. Ishtar said looking at Natsuki. How old is your family? Old very old. Natsuki said looking at Ishtar. Maybe two hundred generation. If that is correct. Ereskigal said getting a little scared. It means you're a god killer. The room fell silent as everyone processed Ereskigal's words. Natsuki's eyes widened in shock, her mind racing with the implications of her newfound heritage. A god killer? The thought sent a shiver down her spine. Hikari stepped forward, his expression grave what do you mean, a god killer? He asked, his voice tinged with concern. Ereskigal hesitated, her gaze flickering between Natsuki and Hikari. In our history, there have been rare individuals known as god killers, she explained. They are mortals with the power to challenge and even defeat gods. If your family lineage spans hundreds of generations, it's possible that you are descended from one of these legendary figures. Natsuki felt a surge of conflicting emotions wash over her. The idea of being connected to such a powerful and enigmatic legacy was both exhilarating and terrifying. What did it mean for her future? Would she be destined to follow in the footsteps of her ancestors, wielding unimaginable power and facing unimaginable challenges? Hikari placed a comforting hand on Natsuki's shoulder, his eyes reflecting a mixture of determination and reassurance. Whatever the truth may be, he said firmly, we'll face it together. You're not alone in this, Natsuki. We'll navigate this journey together, no matter where it leads us. With Hikari's support and the guidance of Ereskigal and Ishtar, Natsuki braced herself for the revelations and trials that lay ahead. As the pieces of her identity fell into place, she vowed to embrace her heritage and harness her newfound power for the greater good, whatever challenges may come her way. How many generations? Natsuki said looking at Ishtar how many generations does it take for God Killer to be brawn? Seven generation of demigod. Ishtar said looking at her. After that it continues and keep going I mean did you guys ever question why the Greeks stopped to worship their gods? Natsuki listened intently, her mind reeling with the implications of Ishtar's words. Seven generations of demigods. It was a concept that both fascinated and frightened her. The idea that her family lineage held such extraordinary power was almost overwhelming. It's hard to comprehend, Natsuki murmured, her thoughts racing. But it explains a lot. The magic, the resemblance to you and Ereskigal. Ishtar nodded solemnly. Your bloodline carries a weighty legacy, one that spans generations and holds the potential for both greatness and peril, she said gravely. But remember, Natsuki, power alone does not determine one's destiny. It is how you wield that power, how you choose to use it, that defines who you are. Natsuki took a deep breath, absorbing Ishtar's words. She knew that her newfound heritage would shape her path in ways she couldn't yet imagine, but she was determined to face whatever challenges lay ahead with courage and integrity. Thank you, Ishtar, Natsuki said, her voice steady. I may not fully understand what this means for me yet, but I promise to honor my lineage and use my power for the greater good. Chapter 60 Wyatt, wait, wait. Haruka said finally relished. You said why else do you think the Greeks stop worship the god, it is because they are dead and it was a god eliminated am. I corrected. Haruka's revelation hung heavy in the air, casting a shadow of unease over the group. The implications of her words were profound, hinting at a history fraught with conflict and the demise of powerful beings. So you're saying? Our ancestors were responsible for the downfall of the Greek gods? Natsuki asked, 
her voice tinged with disbelief. Haruka nodded gravely. It seems likely, she replied. The legends of ancient Greece tell of a time when the gods walked among mortals, revered and feared in equal measure. But then. Something changed. The worship dwindled, the temples fell into ruin, and the gods faded into obscurity. It's possible that our ancestors played a role in that transition, Hikari mused, his expression thoughtful. If they possessed the power to challenge and defeat gods, it stands to reason that they could have altered the course of history in profound ways. Ishtar and Ereskigal exchanged somber glances, silently acknowledging the weight of the revelation. The realization that Natsuki's lineage was tied to such significant events in human history added a new layer of complexity to their understanding of her heritage. As descendants of the god killers, you bear a legacy that spans millennia, Ishtar said, her voice tinged with solemnity. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. It is up to you to determine how you will wield that power and shape the destiny of your family line. Natsuki nodded, her mind buzzing with questions and uncertainties. The revelations about her ancestry had opened doors to a new understanding of herself and her place in the world, but they also posed challenges and dangers that she couldn't ignore. As the group contemplated the implications of Haruka's revelation, they knew that their journey was far from over. The mysteries of Natsuki's heritage and the secrets of her ancestors awaited them, promising both peril and possibility as they forged ahead into the unknown. Also one more thing it was not your ancestors. Ereskigal said looking at Natsuki. It was another family. Ereskigal's clarification sent a shiver down Natsuki's spine, the weight of her words settling heavily upon her. The realization that her ancestors may have been involved in the downfall of gods from another lineage only deepened the mystery surrounding her family's history. So there were other families. Other descendants of god killers, Natsuki murmured, her mind racing with new questions. Do you know anything about them? Where they came from, or what became of them? Ereskigal's expression darkened, her gaze distant as she delved into the annals of ancient lore. The details are hazy, lost to the passage of time and the shifting sands of history, she began. But there are whispers. Legends of rival bloodlines, each wielding the power to challenge the divine. Ishtar nodded in agreement, her features etched with solemnity. It is said that these families clashed in epic battles, their struggles shaping the fate of gods and mortals alike, she added. But as to their ultimate fate. That remains a mystery. Natsuki absorbed their words, a mixture of apprehension and fascination swirling within her. The notion that her family's legacy was intertwined with other ancient bloodlines opened up new avenues of exploration, each fraught with danger and intrigue. Whatever secrets lie buried in the past, they may hold the key to understanding our present, Hikari said, his voice cutting through the weighty silence. But we must tread carefully, for the shadows of history conceal both knowledge and peril. With a shared sense of determination, the group resolved to delve deeper into the mysteries of Natsuki's ancestry, knowing that their journey would take them to the very heart of ancient conflicts and forgotten realms. As they set forth into the unknown, they braced themselves for the challenges that lay ahead, ready to confront the truths that awaited them in the annals of time. Wait a minute. Hikari said looking at Natsuki. Who do you more like your mom or dad because depending on that answer we can now which you got the bloodline from. Hikari's question sparked a moment of introspection for Natsuki as she considered her lineage and the traits she inherited from her parents. Memories of her childhood flooded back, each one offering clues to her ancestry. Well, I suppose I take after my dad more, Natsuki replied, her brow furrowing with concentration. But. I've always felt a connection to my mom's side of the family, too. It's hard to say for sure. Hikari nodded thoughtfully his mind working through the implications of Natsuki's response. Interesting, he mused. It's possible that your connection to both sides of your family played a role in shaping your unique abilities. Ereskigal and Ishtar exchanged knowing glances, silently acknowledging the significance of Natsuki's heritage. Indeed, Ereskigal said, her tone tinged with gravity. The blood of god killers runs deep within you, intertwined with the threads of your lineage. As the implications of her ancestry settled upon her, Natsuki felt a sense of awe and trepidation wash over her. The realization that she carried the legacy of ancient warriors and wielders of divine power filled her with a newfound sense of purpose and responsibility. 
With determination in her heart, she resolved to embrace her heritage and unravel the mysteries of her lineage, knowing that the journey ahead would be fraught with challenges and revelations. Together with her newfound allies, she would confront the shadows of the past and forge her own path in the annals of history. Also do you know this family name? Ereskigal said looking at them. Beck used the Sento have found another god-killer bloodline luckily they haven't unlocked their power the family name is Fujioka. Hearing the name Hikari spit out his water and Natsuki was surprised. The mention of the Fujioka family name sent shockwaves through Hikari and Natsuki, both reacting with surprise and concern. Hikari's mind raced with thoughts of potential implications and connections to his own past, while Natsuki grappled with the sudden revelation about her family's history. F. Fujioka. Hikari stammered, his voice tinged with disbelief. That's unexpected. Natsuki's expression mirrored Hikari's astonishment as she processed the significance of the revelation. I, I had no idea, she admitted, her thoughts spinning with newfound questions and uncertainties. Ereskigal regarded them both with a mixture of sympathy and understanding. The Fujioka bloodline is ancient and powerful, she explained, her voice solemn. Their lineage has been intertwined with the fate of gods and mortals alike for generations. As the weight of this revelation settled upon them, Hikari and Natsuki exchanged a meaningful glance, silently acknowledging the magnitude of what they had learned. The discovery of another god-killer bloodline within the Fujioka family added a new layer of complexity to their journey, raising more questions than answers. With resolve in their hearts, they knew that they would need to confront this new challenge head-on, unraveling the secrets of the past and forging their own destiny in the face of uncertainty. Together, they would navigate the tangled web of fate and carve out a path that would shape the future of both gods and mortals alike. The revelation that Sayori bore the last name Fujioka, indicating a connection to the god-killer bloodline, left Ikari grappling with a mix of shock and concern. He pondered the implications of Sayori's lineage and the mystery surrounding her seemingly diminished power compared to Natsuki. It's unexpected, Hikari admitted, his thoughts racing. Sayori being a god-killer. I hadn't considered that possibility before. But it's strange that she doesn't exhibit the same level of power as Natsuki. Natsuki furrowed her brow, deep in thought. Could it be that the extent of one's power is influenced by other factors? She wondered aloud, considering the complexities of their shared lineage. Ereskigal nodded thoughtfully, adding her insight to the discussion. It's possible that each individual's connection to their ancestral bloodline manifests differently, she suggested. Perhaps Sayori's power lies dormant or is yet to fully awaken. As they mulled over this revelation, the group exchanged glances filled with a mixture of curiosity and concern. The mystery surrounding Sayori's heritage added another layer of complexity to their journey, leaving them with more questions than answers. But with determination in their hearts, they knew they would uncover the truth and confront whatever challenges lay ahead, united in their quest for understanding and resolution. As it was the afternoon as Natsuki was next to Hikari as she saw her raven bow as she looked at Hikari. What the hell was today? Natsuki screamed. Like what was today? Hikari glanced at Natsuki, understanding the whirlwind of emotions she must be experiencing after the revelations of the day. Yeah, today was a lot, he acknowledged, his voice calm as he reached out to comfort her. We learned some pretty surprising things about your ancestry and Sayori's connection to it. But we'll figure it out together, just like we always do. He offered her a reassuring smile, hoping to ease some of the tension that had built up throughout the day. As they faced the uncertainties of the future, Hikari knew they could rely on each other's strength and support to overcome whatever challenges lay ahead. I am just more confused, Ishtar and Ereskigal are from Mesopotamia. Natsuki said looking at her hand. And I am in Japan now did my bloodline get here? Hikari nodded, understanding Natsuki's confusion. It's possible that your ancestors migrated from Mesopotamia to Japan over generations, he explained. Many families have complex migration histories, and it's not uncommon for bloodlines to travel and settle in different regions over time. He placed a comforting hand on Natsuki's shoulder. We can try to trace your family's lineage further to see if we can find any connections or historical records that might explain how your bloodline ended up here in Japan. As then Natsuki gave Hikari her hand, 
Hikari using his reality's power as he made a whole as holographics images of her whole family tree it started with Ishtar and her many lover and for the time ended with Natsuki. Impressed by Hikari's use of his powers, Natsuki examined the holographic images of her family tree with fascination. She traced her finger along the lines, connecting the dots between her ancestors, each one a piece of her heritage. It's incredible to see it all laid out like this, Natsuki remarked, her eyes scanning over the intricate web of connections. To think that each person in this tree played a role in shaping who I am today. Hikari nodded, watching her reaction with a sense of satisfaction. Your family's history is rich and complex, he said. But it's also a testament to the resilience and strength that runs through your bloodline. Together, they continued to explore the holographic display, uncovering more about Natsuki's ancestors and the journey that led them to where they were today. As they delved deeper into Natsuki's family history, they stumbled upon intriguing stories and notable figures. From legendary warriors to wise scholars, each ancestor had left their mark on the world in their own unique way. It's fascinating to see how each generation built upon the legacy of those who came before them, Natsuki remarked, her eyes alight with curiosity. Hikari nodded in agreement. Your family's story is like a tapestry, woven with threads of courage, wisdom, and resilience, he said. And now, you're part of that story, carrying on the traditions and values of your ancestors. As they reached the end of the family tree, Natsuki couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and connection to her heritage. She had always been curious about her roots, and now, thanks to Hikari's powers, she had a clearer picture of where she came from. Thank you, Hikari, Natsuki said, turning to him with a grateful smile. For showing me this and helping me understand more about who I am. Hikari returned her smile, feeling a sense of warmth at her appreciation. Anytime, Natsuki, he replied. We're in this together, through every twist and turn of our journey. Also one more thing. Natsuki said wrapping one around Hikari neck as she kissed him. This is not the the end after all I have you, and I have very unique boyfriend a god and someone who was reborn in this world, I very happy you were greedy with that wish of your. Hikari wrapped his arms around Natsuki, returning her kiss with equal affection. I'm grateful for every moment with you, he said softly. And I promise to always stand by your side, no matter what challenges come our way. As they held each other close, they knew that their journey was far from over. But with their love and determination, they were ready to face whatever the future held, together. As then they door open as they cat Luna came in as Enkidu saw with a face not again. If you two are going to again. Enkidu said looking at Hikari and Natsuki. Please keep it down today. Hikari and Natsuki burst into laughter at Enkidu's blunt remark. We'll try to keep it down, Enkidu, Hikari replied with a grin. But no promises. Natsuki playfully nudged Hikari, her cheeks flushed with embarrassment. Yeah, sorry about that, Enkidu, she said sheepishly. We'll try to be more mindful. Enkidu rolled his eyes, a smile playing at the corners of his lips. Just make sure Luna doesn't get any ideas, he joked, referring to their mischievous cat. With a shared laugh, they settled into a comfortable evening together, grateful for the warmth of their friendship and the bonds that held them together. Chapter 61 The next morning, Hikari gathered everyone in the training grounds. Enkidu, Ishtar, Ereshkigal, and Natsuki stood together, waiting for Hikari to speak. All right, everyone, Hikari began, since we discovered Natsuki's god-killer bloodline, it's crucial to understand and harness her powers. We don't know what challenges might come our way, and it's better to be prepared. Natsuki nodded, determination in her eyes. I'm ready, Hikari. What do we need to do? First, Hikari said, we need to understand the extent of your powers. Ishtar, Ereshkigal, I need your help. You both have experience with divine power. Help us train Natsuki to control and amplify her abilities. Ishtar crossed her arms, a playful smirk on her face. Well, this should be interesting. Training a god killer. Count me in. Ereshkigal nodded. We'll do our best. Natsuki, are you ready to unlock your potential? Natsuki took a deep breath. Yes, I am. Over the next few weeks, they trained tirelessly. 
Ishtar and Ereshkigal taught Natsuki various techniques to control her magic. They pushed her to her limits, testing her endurance and power. Enkidu joined in, helping her with combat training. Remember, Natsuki, Enkidu said, it's not just about raw power. You need to be strategic and precise. Hikari watched over the training sessions, occasionally stepping in to offer guidance. You're doing great, Natsuki. Keep pushing yourself. One day, during a particularly intense session, Natsuki managed to channel her energy into a powerful attack, causing a shockwave that knocked everyone back. She stood there, panting, but with a triumphant smile. I did it! Natsuki exclaimed. Hikari walked over and placed a hand on her shoulder. Yes, you did. You're getting stronger every day. As the days turned into weeks, Natsuki's control over her powers improved significantly. She could now summon and wield magic with precision and strength, rivaling even the gods. Finally, after months of rigorous training, Hikari gathered everyone once more. You've done exceptionally well, Natsuki. You're ready. But remember, power isn't everything. It's how you use it that truly matters. Natsuki nodded, feeling a sense of accomplishment and pride. Thank you, Hikari. And thank you, everyone, for helping me. Ishtar and Ereshkigal smiled. You've earned it, Natsuki. Now, let's see what the future holds. But Ereshkigal raised a hand. It's not fully done, she said, looking at Natsuki. Your power is still in its unlocked state. You haven't even made a godkiller weapon yet. Natsuki furrowed her brow. What do you mean? Ishtar stepped forward. To truly harness your potential, you need to create a weapon imbued with your godkiller magic. It's a rite of passage for those of your bloodline. Enkidu nodded. Creating this weapon will be your final test. It will be a part of you, a reflection of your power and spirit. Hikari smiled. Don't worry, Natsuki. We'll guide you through this as well. You're almost there. The next phase of Natsuki's training began, focused on the creation of her godkiller weapon. They ventured into ancient forests, mystical caves, and sacred grounds to gather rare materials. Natsuki, with the guidance of Ishtar, Ereshkigal, and Hikari, learned the ancient techniques required to forge a weapon of immense power. After weeks of forging, channeling her energy, and imbuing the weapon with her essence, Natsuki finally held up a shimmering blade. It glowed with a fierce, otherworldly light, humming with the power to slay gods. This, Natsuki said, holding the weapon aloft, is my godkiller blade. Hikari and the others gathered around, their faces filled with pride and awe. You've done it, Natsuki, Hikari said. Now, you're truly ready. As they all stood together, a sense of camaraderie and readiness filled the air. They knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, they were prepared to face them, together. As the next day arrived Hikari was woken up by Natsuki as he looked at the date. Oh. Hikari said looking at her. It is graduation day instead it. Hikari quickly got out of bed, feeling a rush of excitement mixed with nervousness. He hurriedly dressed in his graduation attire, the weight of the moment settling on him. Natsuki, can you believe it's finally here? Hikari said, his voice tinged with emotion. Natsuki smiled, her eyes reflecting his excitement. I know, it's surreal. But we made it, Hikari. Together. As they made their way to the graduation ceremony, Hikari couldn't help but reflect on the journey that had led them here. From battling gods and training to harness her godkiller powers, to the quiet moments of laughter and love they shared, it had been an incredible ride. As they entered the auditorium filled with friends, family, and fellow graduates, Hikari felt a surge of pride. He spotted his family among the crowd, their faces beaming with pride. Natsuki squeezed his hand, offering silent support. The ceremony began, with speeches and awards honoring the achievements of the graduating class. Hikari listened intently, feeling a sense of accomplishment wash over him. He had worked hard to get to this moment, and he was ready to embrace the future. Finally, it was time for the graduates to walk across the stage and receive their diplomas. Hikari's heart pounded with anticipation as he approached the podium. He shook hands with the faculty, his eyes scanning the crowd until he found Natsuki, 
her smile lighting up the room. As he accepted his diploma, Hikari felt a wave of gratitude wash over him. Gratitude for his family, his friends, and especially for Natsuki, who had been his rock throughout it all. After the ceremony, they celebrated with a gathering of friends and family, sharing laughter and congratulations. Hikari couldn't stop smiling, feeling the weight of this milestone lifting off his shoulders. As the day came to a close, Hikari and Natsuki walked hand in hand, basking in the glow of their achievements. They knew that whatever the future held, they would face it together, with courage, determination, and love. MC looked around at the group, considering each member's personality in magical affinity. All right, team. We've got a variety of talents here. Let's choose a guild that complements each of us. Turning to Hikari, he said, you've always been drawn to the arcane arts. How about the mystical order? It's a place where you can delve deep into ancient knowledge and master powerful spells. Natsuki, with her fiery spirit and determination, spoke up next. I want something dynamic, something that lets me take charge. The Phoenix Brigade sounds like a perfect fit. Sayori bounced with excitement. I love nature and animals. The Druidic Circle seems like a place where I can connect with the world around me. Yuri, ever the intellectual, considered her options thoughtfully. I've always been fascinated by alchemy and potion making. The Alchemist's Guild would provide the perfect environment for honing my skills. Monica, with her leadership qualities and strategic mind, nodded in agreement. The Arcane Strategist's Guild appeals to me. It's all about using magic tactically and outsmarting opponents. MC smiled, pleased with their choices. Looks like we've found our paths. Let's go forth and make our mark in the magical world. Or. MC sighed looking at everyone. Why don't we make our one guild at will? Be fun just like how we made our own literature club. MC's suggestion sparked excitement among the group. Natsuki's eyes lit up with enthusiasm. Yeah, that sounds awesome. We could create our own magical guild, just like our literature club. It's a great idea. We can tailor it to our interests and strengths, just like we did with the literature club. Sayori clapped her hands together. I love it. We can combine our diverse talents and create something truly unique. Yuri smiled, envisioning the possibilities. We could incorporate elements from different magical disciplines and create a guild that celebrates creativity and collaboration. Monica, always the organizer, nodded thoughtfully. I think it's a fantastic idea. We can establish our own traditions, rituals, and goals, just like we did with the literature club. And so, the Doki Doki Magical Guild was formed, a place where friendship, creativity, and magic intertwined. Together, they set out to explore the wonders of the magical world, united by their shared passion and camaraderie. How interesting! Alastor sighed looking at everyone. I won't be joeing I already gotten an offer from another guild the Golden Lion. Hearing that everyone moth is the flower of the number one guild in Japan the one where they have to invite you, or else you can join just sent invited to Alastor everyone's thought it is be Hikari. Hikari's eyes widened in surprise. The Golden Lion? That's a prestigious guild, Alastor. Congratulations on the offer. Natsuki looked impressed. Wow, that's amazing. They must have recognized your talent and skill. Sayori grinned. I'm so happy for you, Alastor. It's like a dream come true. Yuri nodded in agreement. Indeed, it's quite an honor to be invited to such a renowned guild. I'm sure you'll excel there. Monica smiled warmly. You'll do great, Alastor. We'll miss having you with us, but we understand the opportunity. As they bid farewell to Alastor, there was a sense of pride and excitement for his new journey ahead. They knew he would shine brightly in the Golden Lion, leaving a lasting impact wherever he went. Alastor materialized in front of Leo, the leader of the Shadow Team, and his boss, along with the leaders of the Golden Lion Guild. They regarded him with curiosity and interest, knowing that an offer from the Shadow Team was no small matter. Leo, Alastor began, nodding respectfully. I wanted to thank you for the cover you provided by extending the invitation to the Golden Lion Guild. It was a clever move, and I appreciate it. Leo smiled knowingly, acknowledging Alastor's gratitude. 
Of course, Alastair, he replied. We look out for our own here at the Shadow Team. But I assume this means you've made your decision. Alastair nodded. Yes, indeed, he confirmed. I've decided to remain with the Shadow Team. However, I wanted to express my gratitude for the opportunity presented by the Golden Lion Guild. The leaders of the Golden Lion Guild nodded understandingly, realizing that Alastair's loyalty lay with his current team. They respected his decision and appreciated his professionalism. Leo clapped Alastair on the shoulder, a gesture of camaraderie. Glad to have you with us, as always, he said warmly. Now, let's focus on our next mission. We have work to do. Alastair grinned, a sense of pride swelling within him. With his team by his side, he was ready to take on whatever challenges lay ahead. We'll still. The Golden Lion leader sighed. You can still join after all the Golden Lion is just another prince of the Shadow Team this why Leo sent the offer. Alastair nodded, acknowledging the connection between the Shadow Team and the Golden Lion Guild. Yes, I'm aware of our affiliations, he replied, his tone confident. Thank you for the offer. I'm excited to join the Golden Lion Guild and contribute to our collective success. The leader of the Golden Lion Guild smiled, pleased with Alastair's acceptance. Excellent, he said, extending his hand. Welcome to the Golden Lion. We look forward to working together. Alastair shook the leader's hand firmly, feeling a sense of anticipation for the adventures that lay ahead as a member of this prestigious guild. With this new alliance established, he was ready to embark on new challenges and forge his path to greatness within the ranks of the Golden Lion. MC's proposal to form their own guild sparked a lively discussion among the members of the Doki Doki Guild and Hikari. Each member offered their perspective on the idea, considering its potential implications. Natsuki, known for her boldness, was the first to respond. Starting our own guild sounds like a blast. We could set our own rules and take on missions that interest us. Yuri, with her thoughtful demeanor, nodded in agreement. Indeed, it would afford us greater autonomy and flexibility in pursuing our magical endeavors. Sayori's eyes lit up with excitement. I love the idea of us having our own guild. We could plan fun events and help others with their magic. Monica, always the strategic thinker, contemplated the logistics. Creating a guild would require careful planning and coordination, but I believe we have the skills and dedication to make it work. Hikari, inspired by their enthusiasm, offered his support. All right, let's give it a shot. We'll form our own guild and make it a place where everyone feels welcome and supported. With their decision made, the members of the Doki Doki Guild began discussing the details of their new venture, brainstorming ideas for guild activities, recruitment strategies, and long-term goals. Excitement filled the air as they embarked on this journey together, eager to see their guild thrive in the magical world. So what do we name it? Hikari sighed thinking. Maybe Doki Doki or something else. Hikari's suggestion sparked a flurry of ideas among the group. Natsuki piped up, how about Magical Muses Guild? It's catchy and reflects our creative energy. Yuri nodded in agreement. That name has a certain elegance to it. It's both descriptive and evocative. Sayori bounced with enthusiasm. I like it. Magical Muses Guild has a nice ring to it. Monica, ever the wordsmith, pondered for a moment. It captures the essence of what we're about inspiring others through our magic. Hikari smiled, pleased with the suggestion. All right, Magical Muses Guild it is. Let's make it official. With unanimous consent, the group decided on the name and began laying the groundwork for their new guild. Excitement filled the air as they envisioned the adventures and camaraderie that lay ahead as members of the Magical Muses Guild. But wait! MC sighed looking at everyone. Do we even know how to make a guild? Hikari chuckled. Good point. We might need to do some research first. Natsuki nodded. Yeah, we should figure out the logistics like how to register the guild, recruit members, and manage resources. Yuri suggested, we could seek advice from experienced guild leaders or consult magical guild manuals. Sayori grinned. And we can brainstorm fun guild activities and events. Monica added, let's also establish our guild's values and goals. 
what do we want to achieve as the magical muses? With a clear plan in mind, the group set out to gather information and lay the foundation for their guild. They were determined to make the Magical Muses Guild a place of creativity, camaraderie, and adventure in the magical world. Chapter 62 As they delved deeper into their preparations, the Magical Muses realized the enormity of the task before them. They spent countless hours researching guild management, attending workshops, and seeking advice from seasoned guild leaders. Each member contributed their unique talents and ideas, fueling the collective vision for their guild. Hikari utilized his strategic thinking to draft a comprehensive guild charter, outlining the guild's mission, values, and organizational structure. Natsuki's practical approach ensured the guild's financial stability by devising fundraising strategies and budget plans. Sayori's infectious enthusiasm brought creativity and joy to their guild activities, fostering a welcoming atmosphere for members. Yuri's meticulous research uncovered ancient magical texts and rituals, enriching the guild's knowledge base and mystique. And Monica's leadership skills kept everyone focused and motivated, guiding them through challenges and setbacks. With their combined efforts, the Magical Muses Guild began to take shape. They secured a guild hall in the heart of the magical city, furnished it with cozy meeting rooms and state-of-the-art magical amenities. Recruitment drives attracted talented mages from far and wide, drawn by the promise of friendship, adventure, and personal growth. The guild's reputation grew, and soon they were known throughout the magical realm as a beacon of creativity and collaboration. But their journey was not without obstacles. Rival guilds challenged their authority, and dark forces threatened their harmony. Yet, the bonds forged within the magical muses remained unbreakable. Together, they faced every trial with courage and resilience, emerging stronger and more united than ever before. As they celebrated their first anniversary, the magical muses reflected on their journey with pride and gratitude. They had overcome countless challenges and achieved remarkable success, but their greatest achievement was the bond they shared a bond forged in the fires of adversity and tempered by friendship, loyalty, and love. And so, the story of the Magical Muses Guild continued, its pages filled with tales of adventure, friendship, and magic a testament to the power of unity and the enduring spirit of those who dare to dream. Okay it has been a year. MC sighed looking at everyone. And yet we still don't have a guild master. As MC looked, at Natsuki, Hikari, Monika, Yuri and Sayori as they had relished that, as they relished why they didn't have a large amount of members. As after a while they gather all their member they decide to leave up to a vote among, MC, Monika and Hikari, Sayori, Yuri and Natsuki didn't want to be guild master so it was only the three of them to the vote. The tension in the room was palpable as the members gathered for the momentous vote. Each candidate stood before their peers, ready to accept whatever decision was made. MC, Monika, and Hikari looked at each other, a silent acknowledgement passing between them. They understood the gravity of the decision before them and the responsibility that came with it. Before we proceed with the vote, MC began, his voice steady, I think it's important to remind ourselves of what we're looking for in a guild master. We need someone who embodies the values and principles of our guild, someone who can lead with integrity, passion, and dedication. Monica nodded in agreement. We also need someone who can inspire and motivate our members, someone who can foster a sense of camaraderie and teamwork. Hikari spoke next, his expression serious. And let's not forget the importance of experience and leadership. Our guild master must have the skills and knowledge to guide us through the challenges ahead. With their criteria reaffirmed, MC called for the vote to begin. Each member stepped forward, casting their ballot in the box provided. As the votes were tallied, the room grew silent, anticipation hanging thick in the air. Finally, MC announced the results. After careful consideration and deliberation, we have reached a decision. The new guild master of the Magical Muses Guild is. The tension mounted as MC opened the envelope containing the final vote count. Hikari. He exclaimed, revealing the name written on the slip of paper inside. A collective cheer erupted from the members as they congratulated Hikari on his new role. Hikari accepted the honor with humility and determination pledging to lead the guild with unwavering dedication and passion. With their new guild master chosen, the members of the Magical Muses Guild looked forward to a future filled with promise and possibility, ready to embark on their next great adventure together.
Hikari's expression softened as he took in the cheers and applause from his guildmates. He stepped forward, a sense of responsibility settling over him. Thank you, everyone, he began, his voice steady yet filled with gratitude. I am truly honored and humbled by your trust in me. As guild master, I promise to lead with integrity, to uphold the values of our guild, and to always put the well-being of our members first. He paused, his gaze sweeping across the room, meeting the eyes of each member. Together, we have accomplished great things, and I have no doubt that our best days are still ahead of us. Let's continue to support each other, to push the boundaries of magic, and to strive for excellence in everything we do. With a determined smile, Hikari held out his hand, inviting his guildmates to join him in the next chapter of their journey. Let's make the Magical Muses Guild proud. He declared, his words met with resounding cheers and applause. As after a while, Natsuki and Hikari arrived to their house, they were twenty-two as they moved out of Hikari house which was not saying much when Hikari family house was three blocks away. As Enkidu greatest then inside he had also moved her out with them, during this time Natsuki finally got her growth sperm she had finally went from five. Two to five. Eight finally being close to Hikari higher. And she check even he chest grow which she was the most happy about she was still at Sundra and Hikari won't change that for the world as they were in bath talking a shower together, as they replacted on their life. Natsuki leaned against the tiled wall of the shower, letting the warm water cascade over her. She glanced at Hikari, a soft smile playing on her lips. You know, it's crazy to think about how much has changed since we first met, she said, her voice tinged with nostalgia. Hikari nodded, the water running down his face as he reached for the shampoo. Yeah, it feels like a lifetime ago, he agreed, his thoughts drifting back to their early days together. I never imagined I'd end up with a boyfriend like you, Natsuki admitted, a hint of teasing in her voice. But I wouldn't change it for anything. Hikari chuckled, lathering his hair with shampoo. Hey, you're stuck with me now, he said, flashing her a grin. For better or for worse. Natsuki rolled her eyes playfully. Yeah, yeah, lucky me, she teased, though her eyes sparkled with affection. As they stood under the warm spray of the shower, surrounded by steam and the gentle sound of falling water, they couldn't help but feel grateful for the journey that had brought them to this moment. And as they looked ahead to the future, they knew that whatever challenges came their way, they would face them together. You now. Hikari said, kissing her. My parent want us to get married already what do you say? Natsuki's cheeks flushed pink as she considered Hikari's proposal. She leaned into his embrace, her heart fluttering with excitement. I'd love that, she replied softly, her voice barely above a whisper. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, Hikari. A smile spread across Hikari's face as he hugged her tightly, the warmth of the water enveloping them both. Then it settled, he said, pressing another kiss to her lips. We'll tell them as soon as we get out of here. Natsuki nodded, feeling a surge of happiness wash over her. In that moment, as they stood together in the shower, surrounded by love and warmth, she knew that she was exactly where she was meant to be. As they got out, they didn't know when they will get married but they knew it will happen soon, as they were watching the TV Natsuki formed her god-killer weapon as she just looked at it still remembering that day. And to think for me to learn you had to go back in time. Natsuki sighed lapping a bit. Still can't believe your religion over time changed to Christianity lol they really changed everything about didn't they? Hikari chuckled, nodding in agreement as he watched Natsuki inspect her newly formed weapon. Yeah, they really did a number on things, he said, leaning back on the couch beside her. But some things never change, like us being together. Natsuki smiled, leaning her head on his shoulder as they sat together, the weight of the weapon in her hand a reminder of the journey they had been on together. And I wouldn't have it any other way, she said softly, intertwining her fingers with his. No matter what changes, we'll always have each other. But still. Natsuki sighed looking at him. My dad never came looking for me even after I ran away and so many years have passed it has been what four years. Hikari nodded, understanding the weight of Natsuki's words. Yeah, I guess some wounds run deeper than others, he said gently, wrapping an arm around her. But you have us now, and we'll always be here for you. Natsuki leaned into his embrace, finding solace in his presence. Yeah, I know, she said softly, 
resting her head on his chest. And I'm grateful for that every day. Hikari gently stroked Natsuki's hair, feeling a mixture of emotions swirling within him. We'll make our own family, Natsuki, he said, his voice filled with determination. One that's filled with love and support, where no one feels abandoned or alone. Natsuki looked up at him, her eyes shining with gratitude. Thank you, Hikari, she whispered, her voice barely above a whisper. For everything. They remained in each other's embrace, finding solace and strength in their bond, ready to face whatever challenges the future held together. Meanwhile in MC house he was with Sayori he thought it was finally time to tell, tell her about his demon side she was going to be his wife in the future and he need to tell her everything, I mean she already know about the system so. MC took a deep breath, steeling himself for what he was about to reveal to Sayori. They sat together in their cozy living room, the warmth of the fireplace casting a soft glow over them. Sayori, MC began, his voice steady but tinged with nervousness, there's something important I need to tell you. Sayori looked at him with concern, her eyes filled with love and understanding. What is it, MC? You can tell me anything. MC took her hands in his, drawing strength from her unwavering support. I'm not entirely human, Sayori, he confessed, his gaze never leaving hers. I have a demon side. Sayori's eyes widened in surprise, but she didn't pull away. Instead, she squeezed his hands reassuringly. I see, she said softly, processing his revelation. Does this have to do with the system you mentioned before? MC nodded, relieved that she seemed to be taking it well so far. Yes, it's connected to that. My demon side gives me certain abilities, but it also comes with its own challenges. Sayori listened attentively, her expression a mix of curiosity and concern. I'm here for you, MC, she said sincerely. Whatever you're facing, we'll face it together. Tears welled up in MC's eyes, overwhelmed by Sayori's unwavering support. Thank you, Sayori, he said, his voice choked with emotion. I love you. I love you too, MC, Sayori replied, pulling him into a warm embrace. In that moment, they knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, they would overcome them together, bound by their love and trust in each other. But, Sayori said looking at him. Does that mean your adoption who are your real parents? Don't know. MC said looking at her. I wish I did. As then they saw two crow one white and one black they were wondering where they came as the crow then transformed into Lucifer and Lilty as MC pulled out his sword and summons Albion. Lucifer and Lilith regarded MC and Sayori with a mixture of curiosity and amusement as they emerged from their avian forms. Easy there, MC, Lucifer said with a smirk, raising his hands in a placating gesture. No need for weapons. We come in peace. MC narrowed his eyes, his grip on Albion tightening. What are you two doing here? He demanded, his voice tense with suspicion. Lilith stepped forward, her expression unreadable. We've come to offer you an opportunity, she said cryptically. An opportunity to uncover the truth about your origins. Sayori looked between them, her brow furrowed in confusion. What do you mean? She asked, her voice trembling slightly. Lucifer chuckled softly, his eyes glinting with mischief. We have information about your biological parents, MC, he explained. Information that could change everything you thought you knew about yourself. MC's heart skipped a beat at the mention of his parents. For years, he had wondered about the identity of the people who had brought him into this world. Could Lucifer and Lilith truly have the answers he sought? What's the catch? MC asked warily, eyeing the two demons with suspicion. Lilith smiled, her expression enigmatic. No catch, MC, she assured him. Just a simple exchange. We provide you with the information you seek, and in return, you agree to undertake a task for us. MC hesitated, weighing his options. The allure of finally uncovering the truth about his past was strong, but he couldn't shake the feeling that Lucifer and Lilith had ulterior motives. What kind of task? He asked cautiously. Lucifer's smirk widened, his eyes gleaming with anticipation. All in good time, MC, he replied. But first, let's seal the deal. Do we have an agreement? Just kidding. 
Lucifer sighed looking at MC. I mean don't you recognize your own biological parents? MC's eyes widened in shock as he processed Lucifer's words. He glanced at Lilith, then back at Lucifer, his mind racing with disbelief. MC asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Are you saying? Lucifer nodded, his expression serious. Yes, MC, he confirmed. Lilith and I are your biological parents. The revelation hit MC like a ton of bricks, his thoughts spinning as he struggled to comprehend the enormity of what he had just learned. It explained so much the mysterious powers he possessed, the strange dreams that haunted him, the deep sense of connection he felt to the supernatural world. How? MC stammered, his mind reeling with questions. Lilith stepped forward, her eyes softening with emotion. It's a long story, she said gently, reaching out to place a comforting hand on MC's shoulder. But the important thing is that we're here now, and we want to be a part of your life. MC's heart swelled with a mixture of emotion shock, disbelief, and a strange sense of relief. For years, he had yearned to uncover the truth about his origins, and now that truth had been revealed to him in the most unexpected way imaginable. I don't know what to say, MC admitted, his voice choked with emotion. I never imagined. Lucifer smiled, his eyes twinkling with warmth. You don't have to say anything, MC, he said reassuringly. Just know that we're here for you, now and always. Also. Lilta sighed looking at Sayori. Thank you for being with our son and welcome to the family. Sayori's eyes widened in astonishment, her hand instinctively reaching for MC's as she processed Lilith's words. She had never expected to hear such a statement from the mother of her beloved. Thank you, Sayori replied, her voice trembling with emotion. I don't know what to say. I'm honored to be a part of your family. As Lilith enveloped her in a warm embrace, Sayori felt a surge of gratitude and acceptance wash over her. Despite the overwhelming circumstances, she knew that she was exactly where she was meant to be in the arms of the man she loved, surrounded by the love and support of his extraordinary family. With tears of joy glistening in her eyes, Sayori looked up at MC, her heart overflowing with love. In that moment, she knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, she would face them with courage and strength, secure in the knowledge that she was not alone. Chapter 63 as the evening settled, MC and Sayori sat with Lucifer and Lilith, processing the revelation about MC's true parentage. I don't know what to say, Sayori stuttered, her eyes wide with astonishment. I never imagined. I mean, this changes everything. Lucifer nodded solemnly. It's a lot to take in, I know. But we wanted to tell you both the truth before any more time passed. MC, still processing the shock, managed a nod. Yeah. I mean, I always wondered about my biological parents, but I never expected this. Lilith smiled warmly at Sayori. You've been wonderful to our son. Thank you for being there for him. Sayori's initial surprise gave way to a warm smile. Thank you. I mean, I'm just glad to be with MC, no matter what. Lucifer glanced at MC. Son, there's more we need to discuss. The demon world is shifting, and you need to be prepared. MC straightened, his resolve returning. The balance of power among the demon clans is shifting, Lucifer explained. There are factions that seek to destabilize the peace we've maintained for centuries. As my heir, you need to be ready to navigate these challenges. MC nodded, his mind racing with the implications. I understand. What do we need to do? Lilith placed a hand on his shoulder. For now, stay vigilant. We'll guide you through this, but you must remain strong and focused. Meanwhile, back at Hikari and Natsuki's home, they were discussing their future plans. I still can't believe we're finally engaged, Natsuki said, her eyes sparkling with joy. It feels surreal. Hikari grinned, pulling her closer. Yeah, my parents are ecstatic. They've been hinting about the wedding already. Natsuki chuckled. I guess we should start thinking about that too, huh? Hikari nodded, a hint of mischief in his eyes. You know, we could always elope and surprise everyone. Natsuki playfully swatted his arm. As much as I'd love to, I think our families would never forgive us. 
They laughed together, enjoying the moment of peace after all the recent revelations and challenges they had faced. Elsewhere, in Enkidu's secluded dwelling on the island, he was deep in meditation. The events of the past years weighed heavily on his mind, especially the battles alongside Hikari. He knew he had grown stronger, but there was still much to learn about his new powers and his purpose in this world. I've come a long way, Enkidu muttered to himself, reflecting on his journey. But there's more ahead. I need to find my own path now. With renewed determination, he opened his eyes and gazed out at the tranquil sea, ready to face whatever challenges awaited him next. Back in the city, the Doki Doki Guild was bustling with activity as preparations for their next quest were underway. MC and Sayori had returned, their minds still processing the revelations about his heritage. I can't believe you're actually part demon, Sayori whispered to MC as they reviewed their mission briefing. Yeah, it's a lot to process, MC admitted. But with you by my side, I know we can handle anything. The guild members gathered around them, their camaraderie and determination palpable. They were a team forged through trials and challenges, ready to face whatever adventures lay ahead. As the sun set over the city, casting a warm glow on the guild hall, they raised their hands in unity, ready to embark on their next quest. Together, MC declared, his voice steady and resolute. Together, echoed the voices of the Doki Doki guild members, their spirits united in purpose and friendship. And so, their journey continued, with new chapters waiting to be written in their intertwined destinies. As the morning sunlight filtered through the windows of MC's house, casting a warm glow over the room, Hikari stood with Lucifer and Lilith, absorbing the weight of MC's revelation. The atmosphere was tense yet strangely calm, as if the world itself held its breath, waiting for the next revelation to unfold. So, Hikari began slowly, his voice measured, Your father was my teacher. He turned to MC, his expression a mix of curiosity and contemplation. I never knew. MC nodded solemnly, his gaze steady. Yes, he was a mentor to many, guiding us through the trials of our dual lives. He often spoke highly of you, though I never imagined our paths would cross like this. Lucifer stepped forward, his presence commanding yet strangely comforting. Indeed, Hikari, he said with a hint of nostalgia in his voice. You were always a student who sought knowledge with fervor and wielded your powers responsibly. It is good to see you again, albeit under unexpected circumstances. Lilith, standing beside Lucifer, observed the scene with a serene expression. Our children, she said softly, directing her words to both MC and Hikari, have grown to be remarkable individuals. They carry within them the legacies of both humanity and the supernatural. Hikari nodded, processing the gravity of the moment. I never imagined my journey would lead me here, he admitted, glancing briefly at Natsuki, who stood by his side, her presence a calming anchor amidst the revelations. But I'm grateful for the path I've walked. MC smiled faintly, a mix of relief and apprehension evident in his expression. It's a lot to take in, I know, he said, his voice tinged with emotion. But you're among friends and family here. We've faced countless challenges together, and this is just another chapter in our intertwined stories. Natsuki, always perceptive, stepped forward and placed a reassuring hand on Hikari's shoulder. We're here for you, she said softly, her gaze meeting his with unwavering support. No matter what comes next. Hikari nodded, a sense of determination settling within him. Thank you, he said to everyone in the room. I may not have all the answers, but I know we'll face whatever lies ahead together. As the morning continued, discussions turned to plans and preparations. The air of uncertainty began to lift, replaced by a shared resolve to confront the challenges ahead. In the quiet moments that followed, amidst the echoes of shared histories and newfound revelations, bonds grew stronger, anchoring them all in the present moment and the future yet to unfold. Hikari said looking at MC. Did you know about his fighting ring? Hearing that MC just looked at Lucifer with a face of what? MC glanced at Lucifer, perplexed by Hikari's mention of a fighting ring involving Lucifer. You have a fighting ring? MC asked, his voice tinged with surprise and curiosity. Lucifer chuckled softly, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Ah, uh, yes. It's a little hobby of mine. Nothing too serious, just a place for some friendly competition. 
Hikari raised an eyebrow. Friendly competition. Last time I checked, friendly competition doesn't usually involve half the underworld. Lilith interjected with a smirk. It's more of a show, really. Lucifer enjoys a good spectacle. MC nodded slowly, processing the information. I see. And how long has this been going on? Since before I can remember, Lucifer replied casually. It's one of those things that just keeps growing. Hikari crossed his arms, a playful glint in his eyes. You're telling me you've been running an underground fight club this whole time, and we're just finding out about it now. Lucifer shrugged nonchalantly. I like to keep some surprises up my sleeve. MC chuckled, realizing there was always more to Lucifer than met the eye. Well, I suppose every family has its quirks. Indeed, Lilith agreed with a smile. But enough about our extracurricular activities. How are things with your guild, Hikari? Hikari leaned back, relaxed now that the tension had dissipated. We're doing well. Growing steadily, figuring things out as we go. MC nodded thoughtfully. And Natsuki, how's she handling everything? Hikari's expression softened. She's amazing, as always. Handling everything with grace and kindness. Lilith smiled warmly. It's good to hear. Family is important, no matter what. As they continued chatting into the evening, Hikari couldn't shake the feeling that there were still many surprises and challenges ahead, but surrounded by friends and family, he knew they could face anything together. Plush not to mention that, the fidgeting ring has many people from different universe. Hikari said rembearing all the fight. If really is something you should join me one day MC. MC's eyes widened at Hikari's revelation about the fighting ring's interdimensional participants. Different universes? MC echoed, his curiosity piqued. So, this fighting ring involves fighters from other dimensions? Hikari nodded, a smirk playing on his lips. Yeah, it's quite the eclectic mix. You'd be surprised who shows up. Lucifer chuckled. It's true. We get all sorts, from warriors seeking glory to mercenaries looking for a challenge. MC leaned forward, intrigued. And how does it work? Is it organized, or more of a free-for-all? Hikari scratched his head, thinking back on the chaotic yet exhilarating battles he'd witnessed. A bit of both, actually. There are structured bouts for those who prefer it, but sometimes it's just spontaneous matchups that draw the crowd. Lilith chimed in, her eyes glinting with amusement. It's quite the spectacle, MC. You should see it for yourself sometime. MC glanced at Hikari, considering the offer. I might just take you up on that. It sounds like an experience. Hikari grinned. Trust me, it's worth it. Plus, I could use a partner in crime to navigate the madness. They continued discussing the intricacies of the fighting ring late into the night, sharing stories of epic battles and unexpected alliances forged in the heat of combat. As the conversation flowed, MC couldn't help but marvel at the hidden facets of Hikari's world and the bonds that connected them all. As the conversation unfolded, Hikari, MC, Lucifer, and Lilith stood in MC's house, the air thick with unspoken questions and revelations. So, Hikari, MC began cautiously, you're saying that my father was your teacher in this fighting ring? Hikari nodded solemnly. Yeah, he taught me a lot about combat strategy and how to harness my powers effectively. It was intense training, but it made me who I am today. Lucifer chuckled, a wry smile on his face. Your father has always been involved in unique endeavors. The fighting ring is just one of many. Interests. Lilith interjected, her tone serious yet compassionate. Hikari, we know this is a lot to process. But your connection with MC's father, it runs deeper than just training, doesn't it? Hikari hesitated, memories flickering through his mind. Yeah. He was more than just a teacher. He was like a mentor, guiding me through some tough times. And he always had a way of showing up when I needed advice the most. MC looked at Hikari with newfound curiosity. I never knew my father had this side to him. He always seemed so focused on his work and our family. I guess he kept this part of his life separate. He did, Lucifer confirmed, his eyes thoughtful. 
Your father is a complex man, M.C. His commitment to his family and his duty is unwavering, but he also has a deep sense of justice and a desire to help those in need. That's exactly it. He believed in giving people second chances, even those who society might have given up on. As they talked, M.C. couldn't shake the feeling of admiration mixed with intrigue about his father's hidden life. I suppose I should have expected something like this from him. He always had a way of surprising U.S. Lilith smiled warmly. He's always been full of surprises, that's for sure. But now that you know, Hikari, how do you feel about it all? Hikari paused, reflecting on his journey in the unexpected turns it had taken. Surreal, to be honest. But I'm grateful for everything he taught me. And knowing he's your father, MC, it makes me feel like we're all connected in ways we never imagined. MC nodded thoughtfully, a newfound bond forming between them. I think my father would be pleased to know he played such a significant role in your life, Hikari. And as for the fighting ring. Maybe one day I'll join you there. Hikari grinned. I'd like that. It's a wild ride, but it's where I've met some of the toughest opponents and closest friends. Lucifer raised an eyebrow playfully. Just make sure to watch out for Lilith. She's been known to surprise even the most seasoned fighters. Lilith chuckled softly, a glint of mischief in her eyes. You never know what I might do. As they continued to share stories and laughter, the bond between them grew stronger, anchored by shared experiences and newfound understanding. In that moment, they realized that life's journeys often intertwine in unexpected and beautiful ways, shaping their destinies in ways they could never have imagined. And so, in MC's house, amidst tales of fighting rings and hidden mentors, they found a new sense of camaraderie and purpose, ready to face whatever challenges the future held together. As they talked many years later many things happened, but not that much the shadow group was not really bad guy and Hikari just enjoy his time with them. He enjoyed his life with Natsuki got married and had two kid and lives a lot, he and MC shared secrets and had a lot of fun, and will everyone lived happily. So yeah everyone that enjoyed this fanfic this is the last ch so yeah I hope people like this story enjoy it so yeah bye. Chapter 64 As Hikari woke from his sleep, he found himself much older. He heard running and screaming downstairs, where he found his wife Natsuki trying to control their two kids, who seemed to be causing trouble again. Nat Carey, get down. Natsuki called out to their son, who was chasing after their daughter Rose. Both children had inherited their parents' adventurous spirits and penchant for mischief. Jesus, Hikari sighed, looking at his wife and their two energetic kids. Why are demigods so handful? Natsuki chuckled wearily, trying to catch their children as they darted around the living room. It runs in the family, I guess. Maybe they'll calm down eventually. Hikari nodded, watching the chaos with a mix of exasperation and fondness. Despite the challenges, he couldn't help but feel grateful for the life they had built together after all their adventures and trials. I wouldn't trade it for anything, Hikari said softly, as Natsuki managed to corral the kids back into some semblance of order. Me neither, Natsuki replied, smiling warmly at him. We've come a long way. And indeed they had. From their first meeting to the epic battles they fought together, their journey had been one of growth, love, and learning. Now, as they faced the challenges of parenthood, they knew they were ready for whatever the future held. Together, as a family, they faced the world with courage and love, knowing that their bond was stronger than any magic or destiny. Certainly. Let's continue with MC and Sayori in the epilogue of your fanfiction. As MC woke from his sleep, the familiar warmth of the morning sun greeted him through the window of their cozy home. Beside him, Sayori stirred, her hair streaked with silver threads of wisdom and experience. They had come a long way since their days in the literature club. Their children, a daughter named Aiko and twin sons, Kaito and Haruto, filled the house with their lively chatter. All three inherited their father's latent demon powers and their mother's gentle demeanor, a unique blend that kept life interesting. Downstairs, Sayori was already in the kitchen, effortlessly balancing her magical prowess with the demands of preparing breakfast. The aroma of freshly baked bread and brewed coffee filled the air, a comforting routine they had settled into over the years. Kaito, Haruto, Aiko. 
Remember, no practicing magic until after breakfast. Sayori called out, her voice a gentle reminder that mirrored her unwavering love for their spirited children. MC joined her in the kitchen, a fond smile on his face as he wrapped his arms around her. They definitely keep us on our toes, he remarked, watching their children's antics with amusement. Sayori leaned into his embrace, her eyes twinkling with affection. But they also bring so much joy, she added, her voice filled with pride for their family. As they sat down for breakfast together, MC couldn't help but feel a deep sense of gratitude for the life they had built together. From navigating the complexities of their intertwined destinies to embracing the challenges of parenthood, their journey had been marked by growth and resilience. Outside, the world awakened to a new day, bathed in the gentle light of dawn. MC knew that their past struggles had shaped them, but it was here, surrounded by love and laughter, that he found true peace. As then they saw someone it was Hikari and Natsuki with their kids, as they wave at them, as they went done. Hey Hikari! MC said looking at him. How has your day been? Had to chase these two down again, Hikari chuckled, ruffling the hair of the younger boy beside him. They've got energy for days. MC grinned, glancing at the mischievous twins. Just like their parents, huh? How's Natsuki handling them? Natsuki joined the conversation, a mix of exasperation and fondness in her voice. Let's just say we're getting a lot of practice in negotiation skills. How about you two? Any new developments? Sayori nodded, her smile warm. We're expecting another one soon. Congratulations! Natsuki exclaimed, giving Sayori a hug. That's wonderful news. Hikari clapped MC on the shoulder. Looks like our adventures have moved from battling gods to raising a family. Who would have thought, huh? MC laughed. Yeah, life's full of surprises. But it's good to see us all doing well, isn't it? As the sun set behind them, casting a warm glow over the park, the two families continued to catch up, sharing stories of their lives and reminiscing about the adventures that had brought them together. The End